coming to you live from deep within a very, very cold, icy, radioactive wasteland. We are the survivors of the alt-right Keck apocalypse. The few, the brave, the bitchy, once more wading into battle against the... Um, they're turning the frogs gay. <laughs> the transgender froggy feminist hordes with... Don't blame feminism, blame men, because we haven't tried that. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't I, tried I, that approach. yet. Let's I just want to try something new. <laughs> I just want someone that I can blame for this weather. Because mm, you have is, to blame Boris, like the god of wind or something. This is insane. Like this morning, the wind chill in Celsius, Allison, mm. was minus 48. When I, I got wonder up. what's here. And and tonight it's gonna be minus fifty-seven. Yes. I I've decided not to actually leave my house today. Yeah, no. Um, the dogs the dogs can't even do their thing. They're just like walking around trying to like hold in the poop. I think <laughs> I might have to, you know, get out some wine bottle corks or something and cork them up. Let them pee. Yeah, cork them up <laughs> because because if if they if they're outside for like longer than maybe like 15 seconds they can't make it back up the stairs oh because their legs just freeze oh yeah we had uh, we were, were we're sort of having we're in the same situation with uh with Scipio. uh john then took him out to um to play some some frisbee and he was out there for about a minute, and then he lay on his side with his feet up in the air. Yeah. Because his his paws were too cold. Yep. So we have to take him in. So we've had to play with him on, inside. You ever watch he, him? Does he does he do the tripod, the the revolving tripod when he poops? Yes. When it's yes. This cold. It's like he lifts yes. up one paw, and then he puts it down, lifts up the next one. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He does the revolving tripod, but <laughs> even that wasn't sufficient. He had to do the. Uh, the, the lie down legs. and put his legs up in the air. Yeah. Like, uh, I've keeled over. I'm dying. Carry me back inside. <laughs> yeah, he's a little difficult to carry, though. I think he's topping 100 pounds now. Yeah. Well, Kevin's bad enough at 50 or 55 pounds. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So. Are we reining yes, it in? Cold. Are, we, are we actually doing that? Yeah, we're that? bringing it in. Oh, yeah, wow. we are actually reining it in. Yes. I'm impressed, but I think I'll wait. I wish it would be hang out. Yeah, just wait wait till it actually bears fruit before you start counting your your fruit bearing trees. Um all right. So, once again, we are doing, well, we're doing I'm doing the I put on the pregame, so it's sort of like a uh a, an initial um fundraising goal. And we are we're well, we're about halfway there. We got about $585 just to do this initial fundraising goal. Um, and if you would like to help out, it does go to making sure we can continue to function as an, as a, uh, as a podcast and video producer and various other media producer, please go to feedthebadger.com slash support. Make sure that we can keep talking, bringing you this very enlightening content. Um, you know, I think, uh, I, 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 I did the hard line that, um, the, the politics that matter is the relationship between men and women. And I think. That at this point, I can clearly explain why <laughs> when it comes to uh, the situation everywhere, we are dealing with the politics of the party of single women. And as long as men and women don't come together, women, single women will be setting the political agenda. And it doesn't like they're, they're, they're until, you know, they we're are, just going to be following they have them. Been. They, yeah, they, already yeah, they have, have been, been for like the last hundred years, I think. At least, well, at least not since just they got single the vote, women. yeah. No, but the thing is that when they got the vote, they were still getting married. Now we're looking at single women are becoming the majority mm-hmm. of of the electorate, like the the, the mm-hmm. super majority, and that whatever it is that they decide is what we do, is the direction that we go. And until we challenge that, until we solve the situation between the <coughs> genders, the relationship between the genders, then they're going to be setting the agenda, and that's yeah. it. That's 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 what we're dealing with. Yep. Brian, uh, and can, I, and... can you hear that tiny crackling when Allison talks? No, I don't. Oh hear it. shoot! Is there a tiny crackling? 
Yeah, I don't hear like anything. I don't know. Does, like, the guys that are listening, are you hearing a crackling when Allison talks? Yeah, I don't hear it when Brian talks, but I, you know, I was well, wondering well, let me get if it was out of happening the, um, to all of us. Demonic sigil. I've gone on the floor, and maybe that'll stop. Um, all right, all right so. so. Support our content, feedthebadger.com slash support. Maybe I'll do some arm twisting at the half hour. And uh, if you would, if you want to send us a message, you can do so at feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. That's feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. We get the full benefit of whatever funds you send, and you get the benefit of a little bit more space to expound upon your esoteric um, thoughts, philosophy, whatever. And Questions. also you don't have to filter it through YouTube's uh, postmodern analysis of people's opinions. I don't know. Their 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 comment enhancement system. So you get the full benefit of that, and we get the full benefit of your funds. It's a win win, with maybe not so much of a win for YouTube, but you know, YouTube is YouTube. All right, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip to send us those messages. All right, let's just do it. Let's, let's do just it. Let's get let's in just... there. Okay, so I'm already sharing. Yes, just get it in with... there. Stick in there. Yes, we're gonna we're just gonna get in there. So, all right, here we go. More of what the hell is this woman's name again? Um, McCollum or something. Ma Maria McLaughlin, McLaughlin, on oh, why okay. the trans yeah, this is, thing is this not is, the fault of feminism. They totally didn't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's hear Feminists what she has to say. Feminists didn't create this situation. It was I don't know. It was the it was no Eastern it's the no, Orthodox she's, Church. She's actually making the, the argument Eastern. that it's con it's a conservative position. So let <laughs> let trans. No no yeah. no no no. She's making the argument that it's men who did this. That's yes, yeah. but men the represent the, the, the Alton. Conservatism equals men. That's what that's how they yes. see it. So that's what I'm saying. Okay, let's play to be masculine or feminine it's far more complicated than that but in many roles we have seen that men and women are interchangeable there is no point in denying this however much you might not like it anything and women want men and women are interchangeable yeah but then and then things that women don't want women need to get special treatment because men and women are not interchangeable isn't it amazing? And it all makes perfect sense. Why can't you understand it? This is what this woman is saying. You see, when it benefits men, women, sorry, when it benefits women, men and women are interchangeable. So we can't re recognize anything unique that men, br men, men and masculinity brings to society because that would be saying that women don't bring those unique things. So there's nothing actually valuable about men and masculinity, but women are still uniquely valuable. <laughs> Yes. And that is equality. Of yeah. Of course. Okay. Yeah. No. Continue. And mm -hmm. it's oh. I. You know, like I'm. I was looking at the the two lists there, the two columns there, um, the pink and the. I'm gonna the, go back to that. The pink and the blue, and I'm thinking like basically everything negative, is in that. You in know, the masculine column. In the yeah. masculine column, you know, anything that you can spin, you know, oh, sensitive to others' feelings. That's a nice thing, you know. Uh, very desirous of security. That's a nice thing, you know. Uh, e emotional, verbal, kind, tactful, and nurturing. Those are all nice things, right? Well, yeah. Except for that, men are all those things as well. Like men are. Yeah, men but when men are doing those things, Karen, those are considered feminine traits now. Oh yes, yes, they're getting so the, the, the positive side. traits are feminine. You're you're. The problem with you, Karen, is you're still operating within the white male system. If you were not in the white male system, you would see that. Well, I'm, lo I'm looking at this, <laughs> and I'm seeing aggressive, independent, not easily influenced, dominant, mm -hmm. active, worldly, not easily hurt emotionally, decisive, not at all talkative. Well, that's the only one that I don't fit this thus far. All the masculine Tough. traits? See, when yeah. women exhibit masculine traits, it's good. Less sensitive to others' feelings, not very desirous of security, you know, rarely cries. Uh, that's a little, since menopause, a little bit more. Logical, analytical, cruel, cruel, blunt, and not nurturing. We need more of that. I'm, I'm like, I'm almost this whole list. Yeah. Yeah, because I can be mean as fuck. <laughs> cruel is 
honestly cruel is like that's the only openly negative thing and of course it's on the men's side of course it is um you could say aggressive but sometimes I, they really well, should say not, assertive. Not the better nurturing. way to put it is assertive not nurturing you know yeah uh, it's not, not not that men nurture in a different way it's that they not very sensitive this is, this is what's so egregious about this men can be everything negative but not even the positive things of those negative traits so for example Men are, what they mean by cruel is that men basically judge people based on their merit. So if you earn something, you've earned it. If you haven't earned it, it doesn't matter how much you need it. You haven't earned it. And that can seem like it's cruel to people who don't understand meritocracy. Or who just So they call that cruel, but they don't recognize the positives. Yeah. Which is that people who embrace meritocracy develop merit. Yeah. No, instead they attribute that to male privilege. Well, and they don't, they don't just develop merit, they promote merit, you know, like it's, yes, it's when they did an experiment, I think it was Roy Baumeister wrote about it in, in his book, uh, Is There Anything Good About Men? They did an experiment with like two teams that, you know, were painting a house each, they had to each paint a house. And the one team was, was run by, you know, a woman, right? And she decided who did what and how much everybody got paid. And the other was decided, you know, was run by a man. And I, I forget exactly how, whether they did like lots of different teams or whether these were all female, all male teams or whatever. But, but the, the women tended to want to pay everybody the exact same amount, regardless of whether they showed up late, right? They're an hour late, you know, they sit on their ass, they don't do anything, right? And eventually you had a mutiny. You had people that, you know, the people who were put in, putting in the work saying, y- you can go fuck yourself with this shit, right? Why am I getting paid the same as that freaking lazy ass cunt over there? And, you know, and of course the house isn't getting painted while all this is happening because, you know, half the, the team isn't actually doing any painting. Yeah, because they're just getting as much. And then I'm guessing that the men's were getting everything done quicker and more efficiently. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing like that. And that is directly as a result of that focus on meritocracy. And what she wants is she wants to use the benefit of seeing women as nurturing and giving and fair because that's, you know, everybody should get the same amount because it's based on what they really need. Right. Mm. Not not how well they do. She wants to recognize all those things. She wants policy around this, this, this almost halo effect around how how nice women are. But at the same time, she doesn't want to recognize that that has negatives when it comes to getting stuff done, when it comes to making sure people are incentivized to get that stuff done. She doesn't want to recognize that because that would be recognizing a difference between the sexes that doesn't benefit women. Yeah. (laughs) And that's how it works. Okay, let's watch a little bit more. Men and women are interchangeable. There is no point in denying this, however much you might not like it. And the obvious conclusion of this guy's argument is that women shouldn't have done all that. They shouldn't have got educated. They shouldn't have gone out and become leaders in industry and politics or anywhere else. They shouldn't have become scientists and engineers or carpenters or plumbers or whatever. They should have just shut up and stayed at home. But where does he say this? Well, uh, I, think like, really? just con- I think she's just concluding it. You know, so, feminists. You, can't, you know that feminists have like telepathic abilities, right, right? right? Like they can read minds. Yeah, psychic abilities. They can just read right into the lines here. Because what I'm hearing is that men and women have different traits. That doesn't mean women can't achieve anything. And incidentally, women have achieved things throughout all of human history. I think I mentioned this on the last one. Yeah. It ju- you know, just saying that. Uh, the shoemakers should go out and make shoes does not mean that you are not saying that the weavers should not go out and weave. Yeah. Like that's... <laughs> when, when you look at, when you look at like being the mistress of a house, especially a large house, like, you know, like a castle in the medieval times being like, um, you know, being the wife of the vassal Lord or whatever. Right. Um, you, you had to know, all of the things that your servants were doing you you need to like it it was like basically like every year at tony roma's every one of the managers ends up doing one day in the kitchen behind the line one day in the dish pit 
one day and prep one day out on the floor waiting tables right one day behind the bar every year to keep their skills up yep. because they could be called on to do any of those jobs at any time because they're shorthanded or whatever and on top of that how do you know if the job is being done well if you don't know how to do it how do you know if you're being served well if you don't know how anything is done and that yep. was the woman's role within the household she had to know how to make candles she had to know how to sew tapestries she had to know how to how to you know spread fresh rushes all over the floor she had to know how food was should be cooked and stored and, and how the stock need, needed to be rotated right and all of that she had stuff. to have a an appra the ability to appraise men's work as well too yeah at the very least so she knows that things are being done in a, in a way that won't cause problems going down yeah. the road yeah so i mean like you're you're looking at some you're looking at a really important position and in you know in ancient greece with the oikos it was it went beyond that it went like so far like the women were really in charge of the household and you know they decided who was invited over for dinner and and which families and they decided what were gifts. not welcome in the house they decided what gifts they they were going to give to their guests right they decided all and of that was things. huge in the gift economy and what not i mean greeks wasn't exactly a gift economy but there was it was this kind of reciprocal gift giving was really important to those kind yeah. of older cultures so and and also there's recent evidence that there was women were never really restricted to the gynecheum i think it's that's how you pronounce it yeah. it's just that that was their space yeah so it wasn't it's that they like, were restricted from the other space no men allowed yeah. it was like that was their space so no men allowed yeah. um and they had pretty much every other space too so they, they yeah the, even in that kind of a conservative culture women really did have an important role and um uh, i mean you look and at the uh, home was the, the home was the center of business right the, like yeah, it, it was, was it was well, it was the, the center of the material goods that you based your business on the production yeah. of that yeah it was it was basically it was the factory in which ev everybody so this idea all that their employees worked the, this idea that women and men have different spheres does not mean that women and men's spheres are less or better. Or, and, 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 and even that, even that, there's nowhere in this that says that uh, women shouldn't have gone out and been productive, huh. you know, gone out and achieved things. Um, but just that they aren't interchangeable with men. Yeah. And they aren't. Like the, the, what we're seeing now is we've had how many years and even even bigger in like the Nordic countries, the gender paradox. Right. Mm -hmm. We have seen how many generations of, oh, yes, men are in men and women are interchangeable. And yet we haven't moved on certain particular aspects of men and women's roles. Men yeah, are we still doing the hard, all. dangerous and risk taking labor. And that includes being a CEO. See, being a CEO is very stressful. Um, it's like being the icebreaker in the, you know, the Northwest Passage. It's like it, it's an extremely stressful, dangerous role. Um, it may not be physically dangerous, but it can be dangerous in terms of if you're a misstep, it's your head that rolls if you're a oh, CEO. Yeah. And so, I mean, men still do those jobs because they have higher risk tolerance, because they are willing to be cruel in the service of merit, right? Because of all of that. Now, that doesn't mean that women can't do their thing, too, as they have done throughout all of human history. I don't even, this shouldn't should even be an argument. Women have always worked. Women have always achieved. Women have always done things. Okay? But, That's, th nobody is saying that women have, what, what? That women just going to sit on a silk um, cushion and just. Eat bonbons and, and watch soap Eat bonbons and watch paint dry? Nobody's saying yeah. that. No, we're going to watch never, The View. Yeah, like that 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 has only been an ideal once for like 10 years in the in the 20th century. Get over it. <laughs> like Yeah, and then women an women were like, "We hate this luxury. It's boring." Yeah, that's exactly what was said. You know, and I can also Look at what our men did actually, to us. You know, actually, you know, it speaks it doesn't speak that badly of women because they they went stir crazy because they weren't useful. 
That's yeah, the but, simple thing. But, but feminism the, hasn't solved that. At, well, at the same time, though, feminism was like, yeah, your men did this to you. They yeah, made it you didn't solve that. that it you did know. not solve that feeling of uselessness. And the feeling of uselessness came from what? Because women weren't managing the household, like a big household, or they weren't doing the weaving. They weren't part of an essential, uh, an essential and fundamental aspect of society. They weren't even washing their own dishes or cooking food for the family yeah. necessarily, Just right? Freaking you know? stir crazy because you had too much time on your hands, and then you invented feminism, and it's ridiculous. It's like no, men didn't do this. Yeah, men did it to you because they wanted to give you freedom and luxury. Yeah, and then you gave them feminism. <laughs> like what? Yeah. But anyway, like this is not even you really. This woman has no right to read that in. None whatsoever. No. Men and women not being interchangeable doesn't mean women um, put in boxes to paint, watch paint dry. Yeah. Right. That just doesn't. Because, you know, we've had societies in the past that didn't just, you know, believe that men were men women are interchangeable. But that was just taken as a fundamental aspect of nature and life, like the sky and the ground. And they still had women doing stuff. Yeah. So don't give me this crap. All right. Let's go. Sorry. Unless you Since have more they didn't do that, they weren't content to do that. Of course, men are going to pretend to be women. Serves us right. In fact... Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. What no, the hell are you complaining about anyway? Because we weren't content with just sitting in our houses, eating bonbons and doing three hours of labor a day while watching The View, we, because we weren't content with that, thus trans women. It's like, what? Yeah, well... Okay. Yeah. That's not what he said. No. It's stripping away men's unique value. It's extra Saying weird because it's like... Are interchangeable. It's like a fraction of a percent of men that become trans women. So how is that... Like, Yeah, I, yeah even that. Yeah, it's, it's like, like men like, en masse are like, <laughs> you know, castrating themselves to be women. I mean, the number's yeah, but, growing, but like, yeah, it's still like a tiny... women. Women's identity is not under threat. Yeah, no. And and if, you know, even if it was a larger percentage, what does that say about how society treats men versus how society treats women if yeah. men right. just all of a sudden decided they were going to, you know, go full Mrs. Doubtfire? You know, okay. like all of these all of these shows where men cross-dressed, right? Like um Mrs. Doubtfire, Tootsie, right? It was all men who'd hit a brick wall with a problem, right? Mm -hmm. She she wouldn't let him see his kids. So he dressed like a woman and became got hired as the nanny, right? Yeah. Uh he he lost, he was like a talk show guy and uh and they wanted to replace him with a woman or whatever and and he couldn't he couldn't find any work in in entertainment in talk shows so he dressed as a woman right it, it's like so what does that say right really? no i mean that's when that's you think about question. it you know it's i mean there there are some you know there have always been times in history where women wanted to do things mm -hmm. and and dressed like a man um, you know, they wanted to, they wanted to be like a gunslinger or they wanted to fight in the civil war or the, or the revolutionary war. Right. Yeah. And so they would dress like a man and do that. There were cases of that. And, you know, Hey, if you can actually physically take on that task and survive and, and all of that and not let your, your buddies down. If you can dress like a man and nobody ever actually realizes you're you're a woman because you're just as as competent as the next soldier, right? More power to you, right? Yeah. Good on you, right? But uh, it's it's like it's amazing though when you think about it that you know when you're when you're thinking about okay, so you got you got these examples of men dressing like women in order to make their lives easier and you got a few women much smaller number of women dressing like like men in order to be allowed to take on something dangerous and challenging greater responsibility to their society yeah, yeah. should i play more okay, okay. yes yeah.
feminist has ever denied physiological differences between men and women, which is what the words at root imply. If but the anatomical differences Matt refers to are psychological, psychological differences, differences, which is critical, yeah. because yeah. what they're saying is that we can approximate those physical differences that you are relying on, and then they become women. Yes. There you go. Because psychologically, they are women. Mm -hmm. And and it's different. It's, like, it, it's it's infuriating that she's just like, yeah, no, 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 no. Like we had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with this. In fact, we were against this the whole time. It was the Zoroastrians. Oh, the not the Zoroastrians. No, I think it was the Unitarians. Look, it's the Unitarians. Mm -hmm. The Spanish Inquisition created trans people. Oh, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. All right, exactly. Differences in average size and strength, then don't try to pretend that those differences matter that much in most roles and occupations nowadays. Useful in opening jars, though. Here's another comment. Okay. I okay, so she's trying to be cute. Okay. So if you understand that nowadays a lot of the risk taking is is taken out of public jobs then how come you can't understand that in the past women weren't restricted from work because men were being meanie pants but yep. because of their physical limitations yeah and not just that because men didn't want to see women be like ground pieces fighting a boar or something yeah no they didn't they didn't want to watch their wives shoveling coal onto a lorry for like 16 hours a day you know like that that's not that's not what any man wanted his wife to no, i was thinking to be doing. i was talking i was talking to the guys in the discord today uh you know the horrible dread misogynist and they and we we're talking about there's a new individual who came by and he has serious health issues and one of the things that he's contending with is the fact that those serious health health issues are going to mean that he's unlikely to have a girlfriend or a woman oh. in his life because women yeah. are not going to they just no. don't they just you know if a man has serious health issues um they're not interested they don't want to take on the role they don't want they don't care they're just not going to do it yeah. and that's 100 percent in the statistics you cannot argue it uh whereas we have uh some uh, well, at least one man, I don't know, there might be more, um, off the top of my head, who has a, a girlfriend with really, really serious health conditions. And um, he helps take care of her. And I believe that he knew about those health conditions even before she, he was in a relationship with her. And that wasn't a problem. So men are much more likely to be willing to get into relationships with women who have really, really extreme needs um, in terms of their health. Whereas women are not in the reverse. And we, and again, you can, this is statistics. Men who have disabilities have a greater, greater difficulty getting into relationships than women with disabilities because men want to take care of women. Yeah. Right. They want to take care. It's like, it's like baseline in men. They just want to take care of women, which is why feminism actually can exist as a whole concept and idea without being kicked to the curb. Um, because well, that's what it's appealing to. Well, it's just, it's, it's kind of like the red pill uh, hierarchy, right? Um, you know, men love women, women love children, children love puppies. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, well, okay, if women have a stronger uh, affinity and a affiliation with their children than with the man, the father of their children, if, there's, if the emotional bond is stronger, which I think that it can be, I mean, obviously, given the divorce rate and all of, you know, the things that tend to happen after divorce, I would say that, yes, the emotional bond between the mother and the children is stronger than between the mother and the father. Um, but you, you see this dichotomy in terms of women being willing to take on a man with disabilities, particularly if they're not explainable, right? Like maybe... If it's an act, if he has scars because um, because he got into an, a car accident or something like that, right? Then that's one thing. If he has scars because he had rampant acne as a teenager, 
you know, like you don't want your, want your kids to inherit that. Um, and if, if he needs as much care or even more care than the children do, yeah, no, she'll, she'll, she'd just be like, yeah, no, no, thanks. Cause uh, not only am I going to be looking after children, right? Cause I'm going to be looking after children. I don't want to have to look after you too. And I especially don't want to have to look after children that inherited your disability. Right. I mean, that's just the, that's just the reasoning. And it, and that is a really cruel way of thinking and they, they don't think of it in those terms, but that's what's going on in their mind when they turn these guys down for relationships is, you know, you're going to give me defective children and then I'm going to be stuck taking care of you all. Yeah. Should we play some more? Well, let's play some more. Yeah, let's play some more. I think this transgender nonsense can be traced back to the radical feminists of the 1970s who argued that gender was just a social construct and that men and women are basically the same. By denying all innate differences between men and Why women and teaching that all glorious Steinhoff she, question. She hit uh, yeah, she blurbs out like the bit where he also says Gloria Steinem comes to mind. She was a CIA agent too, or she worked yeah. with the CIA. Which which is not it's you know that's she was a CIA she, asset. Yeah, she is CIA they asset. Everyone knew this for a long time, not a mystery, not a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. It's just a fact, okay? So, um, all right, let's play the rest of this. Human behavior was learned and not innate, that women could be good soldiers and men could be good mothers. The feminists opened the door to this idiocy. This is an extraordinary comment in which so far as I'm concerned, the posto shoots himself in the foot. I doubt he was ever a good soldier. He's oh, take that, men. God, this is so, like, mean. <laughs> no, but, and her jokes are, like, so lame. Yeah, they fall pretty yeah, flat. Yeah, she probably yeah, makes uh, other women, like, feminists Christopher Hitchens laugh. was right. Christopher Hitchens was right. Women aren't funny, and feminists even less funny. All right, let's play the rest of this. Her... Her response. How does he shoot himself in the foot? I'm curious. He's suggesting that women can't be good soldiers when there is a massive amount of evidence to the contrary in many different armies around the world. These Syrian Kurdish women fought back against ISIS and played a crucial role in defeating them. You're uh -huh. What? Okay. I mean, there are women in well, the military, but that, that doesn't mean that they're good soldiers. Okay, here's one thing that makes women terrible soldiers. You can't force them to be them. That's you true. You can't, you can't, like, that's 100% women are terrible soldiers because society will not force them to be a soldier. Well, so, I think, I think, doesn't Israel have, uh, like, mandatory military service for both sexes? Yeah, it's sort of like a, uh, I think you, you have to, like, go to basic training or something. It doesn't mean yeah, that you're I mean, fighting. It doesn't mean that yeah, you're seeing no, no, any no. action. No, it's like a standard to, thing to just. Yeah. Like, it's a standard you know. thing. You have to serve for a year or something yeah. like that. And, um, but, uh, yeah, no, my, my mom. And but I don't, I don't really my... think Israel forces the women to fight. I mean, from what I know, every time I hear about an Isra a female Israeli soldier or veteran or whatever, she didn't see any action. You think Gal Gadot was like, hip deep in like the gore of her enemies no no i, <laughs> I have doubts so, but, <laughs> i have but, doubts about the whole thing it's like you know wh which was the um was it was it uh castro that had like a or Gaddafi that had, like a special forces unit of women and i was like oh you mean bitches that he fucked that wore uniforms <laughs> oh no it was it, basically probably he was using them as human shields if, if they were like his yeah personal detail it's like nobody wants to mow down a bunch of women just to take him out. And, you know, so it's like, but, you know, like, I, I think Israel, they did have some women in combat, like in frontline combat roles. But then they found out that that didn't work too well. It really disrupted unit cohesion. So then they moved to, you know, the women who wanted to and who could handle it, like physically. Um, they had you know, a very s small number of all female units 
doing actual combat, if I recall. Yeah, just, I mean, okay, simply so, saying that there are women in a military force doesn't mean anything, really. It doesn't. Well, I mean, well like here's, it, here's the thing. She's taking an example where we're talking about situations where the, the society is basically down to its last last drop, maybe. Yeah, like, like Ukraine. Yeah. Like well, Russia no, actually, during... Ukraine's still only drafting men. They're just increasing the age. Yeah. Yeah, but, it, well, maybe they'll, but, and, th and that's still... Like, no, the women are gone already. Destroyed. They're in Germany. Like Yeah, yeah. no, but these, these so, British women, I don't think that they were drafted. I think they, they volunteered. They volunteered. But what my point is that when you're talking about society's push to the wall, yeah. and then women step up and do something militarily, um, that's after, you know, it, it, that's like a last desperate throw. Yeah. Right. That's after um, supposedly men have failed in their role. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And when they, when there's no men left or not enough. So, yeah. but you're still not allowing men the honor of recognizing that they're the first to go, mm -hmm. and they will always be the first to go. No offense, but I can't see. And it, it, I would hope for a society that this isn't the case, but it's probably a ways in the future. Men will probably always be the first to go when it comes to to war, and they can be drafted, right? And yeah, they can absolutely. be sent to the front line, right? And they can they can and and this is something like it's it's a it's this aspect that men will do this to other men, mm -hmm. and you are not recognizing that fact. Then and this is a result. This this entire phenomenon is again a result of meritocracy, and what you call cruelty, or what was termed the cruelty of men is that men will force other men to fight. And um, this is this is like that they will see men who do not fight and do not defend their nation as being not men. Yeah, and so and will is, the women. And so will the women. <laughs> and um, and this this meritocracy, men men live in, and die by it, which is why they make better soldiers. Okay, and pointing to these situations where what men were either incapable or were mowed through and then it was left to some women to try to do something militarily and i'm guessing that it wasn't just the women we just focus on the women yeah you know that's not that does that denies the fact that men are the first to go right men are the first to step up men are the first to get in the fray men are the first to die and the reason why is a function of their masculinity and it's not just that oh men send other men yes they do that's the point and, and it's not just that men are aggressive no, it's not that just men are aggressive. Men do that. They are willing to sacrifice other men and themselves. That's key because the generals in World War I in particular were just as likely to be injured as a private. People don't know that. Injured and killed. So they send themselves and they send other men because of this belief about meritocracy and this idea that men should sacrifice more to earn their place. And they enforce it on themselves and they enforce it on others. And women do not. Mm -hmm. They don't. And this is a fundamental difference that you will refuse to acknowledge. And you're trying to play that off that this, these, these, these uh, counter examples, which usually, again, are a result of men already having played their role and being defeated. These counter examples say something. Well, if the men of these societies hadn't been defeated, these women probably wouldn't be going to war. Yeah, these, these are the exceptions that prove the rule. Right. Yes. Like the, what? And, and you refuse to acknowledge that this is something that men do because they're men, because of their masculinity. We shouldn't force it on them. We shouldn't expect it of them. We should respect that part of their nature and not expect them to prove it to us that they're capable of this because they are. There's nothing that would have made any man in like the 1910s ready for world war one there's nothing his mother could have told him his father could have told him he could have learned shoeing horses or in a factory or in school to prepare him for that and yet they went through it they stood up to the horrors of it where did that come from where did that strength come from it came from who they are as men that's where it came from. It was not granted to them by any society, any belief system, nothing. It came from who they are as men. And that should be respected. And our, our, I honestly, the fact that you don't, the fact that you want to play silly buggers with with all of this shit and just say, oh, yeah, when it when it benefits us, 
uh, sex is interchangeable, when it doesn't, when it benefits women, sex is interchangeable. When it comes to respecting men, um, it's interchangeable. But when it comes to treating women as special, oh no, no, sex isn't interchangeable. It's just <sighs> It's deceitful. infuriating. It's, it's infuriating. It's, it's such a, it's, and this, like, still, it's, I mean, she's being such a fucking woman here. Right? Yeah. You know, like, I didn't have anything to do with that. It was the, it was the horrible men over there, right? Like, ducking accountability for shit that you did. It was the did. Spanish Inquisition. For, it was for, the Quakers. It yeah, was, for, for shit that you it was did. the Jesuits. Is, is, is traditionally female. It's like, this is one of the things that they, they never want to look at, right? Because not all female traits are positive. Not all female traits are like, ooh, ooh, it's such a negative trait that women cry a lot. You know, like, no, that's not a negative trait. I mean, women crying a lot, okay, they do. They cry a lot. Men cry less. Biologically, that's how we're programmed. And hormonally, that's how we're programmed. Women cry more than men do, right? But what we don't ever want, and ooh, women are passive and men are active. Well, that leaves out all those times when women act and then they play as if they're passive. Oh, well, it wasn't me. I'm just passive, right? She's doing that right now. Yeah. She, she's literally the person who, who caused the fucking fight, right? And then she's like, well, I didn't do anything. They just started hitting each other. Let's... uh. Let's get to the next part, because this is also, this is, she's responding to the comment um, that, you know, um, that, well, it's about, he's, she's going to get to how men cannot be good mothers. So let's see what uh, she says about that. Trying to deny that? Shame on you. He's also denying men can make good mothers. Obviously, men can't be any kind of mother because they are men, and mother is a word reserved for women. Granted, mothering a child has a different meaning from fathering a child. So presumably what he means is that men aren't good at being the parent with primary responsibility for loving and nurturing their child or can't change nappies or patch up a hurty knee or something. Why? Oh, OK. So um, she's saying motherhood yeah, is no, no, that's... nurturing and fatherhood is yeah. what? Uh, fathering well, a child okay. is uh, just is just begetting one on a woman, I guess. No, 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 no. I, you know, like Warren Farrell has used this example repeatedly, or this this explained this repeatedly. That you know, men and women tend to have different parenting styles. Um, the men tend to uh, interact with their children a little bit at arm's length, right? And they also tend to you know, kind of push their kids to, you know, oh, yeah, you can climb that high. Yeah, no, go on. Encourage them to take risks and including their girls, right? And, and you know, try new things and all of that stuff. So you, you literally will have the mom and the dad at the playground and the woman is, the mother is yelling, be careful up there. Oh, my goodness. Maybe you should come down. And the dad's like, you can go higher. I, you can do it. You can totally do it. Right. Okay. So there is, there is a difference and the, or, you know, the kid falls off the bike, skins his knee and the mom is like, Oh, you don't have to try again. You know? And then the dad's like, no, nah, get on the bike and let's, let's, you know, see if you can do it without bonking yourself up more. Right. So it's, it's like, there are differences in general in the ways parents Parents. Well, what is her ultimate conclusion from this? Because she's basically said that these counter these these minor counter these minor counter examples disprove the notion that women uh, can't be soldiers. This these examples where you know women were the last line of defense after their men um, were all slaughtered proves that women can be soldiers. Um, sure, they can be soldiers, but not to the same degree or extent. Nor yeah. do women are women inclined to force other women to be soldiers. Yeah, because you're not I mean, even you're not even inclined to force your fellow women to take responsibility for transgenderism. Like, yeah, you think you're? Yeah. Do you think this woman's going to be like, yes, we all must, 
we all must get into the get it, you know, pick up a, a, a firearm and fight for our nation. No, she's going to be pissing herself under her desk, yeah. guaranteed. Yeah, she okay, probably let's know how to let's listen to some fire. more. Yeah, let's find out what she Would has he to say think about the motherhood. That? Does he not know any loving, hands on fathers? Because I do, and in fact, I was lucky enough to have a couple of kids with one of them. Now, on to loving hands on oh, another Father comment, he, starting not the with... same, not the same thing as being a mother, right? Or, you know, like it's loving and hands on, absolutely wonderful. Also right? normal. Yeah. Not, yeah, not, not normal. like a, not, not a fucking anomaly. It's not like, oh, my, my husband. It's like, yeah, your husband or, and, and father of your children is basically like most husbands and fathers. Yeah, like it's it's like, um, uh, are you saying that fathers generally don't love their children, or don't express love for their children, or that they you know aren't hands on? Like they might not do. I mean, I don't think that my dad ever changed any of our diapers. I'm pretty sure he didn't. Um, he did change my kids' diapers. Um, it was quite fun to watch him do that, uh, but. You know, he he would walk the babies around like um, when Jack was inconsolable crying and everybody else was like, we were all trying to sit down and eat dinner and Jack just wouldn't stop crying. And and he'd say, you know, you 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 go go eat, Karen, it, while the food's hot. And, and he would walk Jack, you know, put him put the kid's head on his shoulder and swat his little bottom, tap his bottom you know, and, and, uh, pat his bottom rather, and, you know, sing to him and walk him up and down the hallway, right. To keep him quiet, you know, like, I mean, these are, you know, and my, my dad was tough as nails. Right. And I remember him being a hands-on dad. He was awesome. I remember him picking a ton of glass out of my, the bottom of my foot with needle yeah. nose tweezers. Right. You know, just because he didn't go, oh, honey, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. This is going to hurt. You're like, there's no blood. It doesn't hurt. I was like, but there's blood everywhere. He's like, ah, don't be a wuss. <laughs> All right. We ready for more? But he was very gentle. More. This question. Tell me, Maria, who was it that created the distinction between sex and gender? and insisted on pure blank slatism in the first place. Tell you what, I'll let Matt Walsh answer that. Here's what he said in a speech last wait, year, 2022. Wait, wait, the comments that she's not addressing, the parts of the comments she's not addressing is the best part. Like, um, okay, do you want me to read this? Cause I can- Yeah, it's, it, the print's really oh. small for me, so go ahead. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I know, I, I have the youngest eyes here. <laughs> No, it's just that I I'm, I have it. I look. I have not all a lot of real estate on my screen, so okay. Go um, ahead. Well, I don't. I don't either. But oh, good plug. Oh, good. Okay, just a second. Uh, I'm trying to expand it so I can see it a little bit. No, it's not going to do that. All right, I'll just I'll just squint. All differences between male humans and female humans in terms of behaviors were drip down to socialization. Yeah, that's right. That wasn't the feminist who did that, guys. It was the Jesuits. Oh, all no, no. She's going to go into it. She's going to go into it. I, I, I know this all part. All done? Okay, I know you know this part, but let's see what she's actually responding to. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, All differences be... Okay. All done purely for political expediency, decades before the trans cult shambled awkwardly along. Steinem said that we all lived in matrices until men discovered paternity a few thousand or matriarchies and matrices until men discovered paternity a few thousand years ago that that thing non-human animals can can't can work out i'm not quite sure how it works men did the hunting came home and were presumably placid it's the patriarchy what makes men i.e male humans more violent than women females the day that men worked out they were bigger and stronger and much more at home with violence must have come almost as much of a shock as the day they worked paternity out. Wonder what Steinman makes of Steinman makes of that. There's also something quite funny about a feminist chastising someone for speaking out with their field. 
Of course, no one with a degree, no feminist with a degree in something like literary theory would ever speak authoritatively like, about something like evolutionary biology. I think that speaks to the whole many feminism things, just like there's many physics, I guess, yeah. <laughs> or, ethi or ethology. No, that would never happen, has never happened, will never happen. No, even in an existent extent matriarchal societies men still do the hunting sadly a society being matriarchal doesn't seem to mean it's able to overcome that throwing gap of 20 meters or 10 percent gap in sprinting not sure why well yeah. but to sum up this comment is he's basically saying that feminists said that all the gender difference were socialized that women were unfairly excluded from men's activities in the past and currently and uh in that um yeah, that uh, men were socialized to create a patriarchy, that they were socialized to be violent. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, let's see what she has to say. Let's see how she distorts that is what I'm getting at. The roots of, of modern gender ideology can be traced all the way back to the 19th century, in fact, arguably even earlier than that. But it really began to take its current shape in the mid-20th century thanks to the work of two hideously evil crackpots named Alfred Kinsey and John Money. Uh -huh. What? Not feminists, then? As for John Money, he was a prominent psychologist and sexologist, and uh, John Money was one a of the one of the. No, because John Kinsey. Money is a man, no. so that means he wasn't a feminist. You see how this works? Okay, okay. There are no gender differences, but men can't become feminists. Oh, well, wait, not if their not if their ideas are inconvenient. Oh. Uh, not if not if women have to take responsibility. For you know, their you know, Alfred not Kinsey. Not if their ideas were once convenient, but no more. And also, Mike, uh, Matt, Walsh can, uh, Matt, Matt Walsh. Walsh can be wrong. Well, yeah, but then wrong. she's going to throw all of that out. But I don't think no, he I is don't, wrong. I don't think, I don't think Matt Walsh is wrong about this. It, it Like gender, the idea of gender um, being interchangeable or being fungible uh, did arise from Kinsey and John. Okay, Money. but let me, let me put it this way. Which came first, women's desire or feminist desire to take over men's roles and a man saying, hey, I can justify that scientifically. Oh, like, yeah, which no, came no. First? John Stuart Mill was writing about, you know, uh, the, the reason why we had to give equal rights to women in the 1800s, right? You know, like you had the Declaration uh, you of had Sentiments, a vindication of the Declaration of Sentiments, a vindication on the rights of women you know, yes. uh, all of these things, right? You had all of those writings that began with feminism, with Charles Fourier, right? That Yeah, and, well, not, we, and, we and then the women freedom. as well. Yeah. Okay, the yeah, women and, were saying, there's no reason to exclude us from men's roles. And one of the yeah. big things that people use, but but biology, and then these two guys came and said, but we're going to, we're going to counter that. Yeah. Now, which came first? The impetus, do you, you think that, that money and Kinsey would have just popped out of nowhere if there wasn't this group of women saying we have a right to men's roles and, bio, you know, oh, they're I, saying biology? I think Matt Walsh acknowledges ahead. that because he starts by saying it goes, you can trace it back to the 18th century, but, and he yeah. basically talks okay. about money and Kinsey as like the the major thing that feminists and queer theorists, but I repeat Embrace. myself, use Embrace. as the basis yeah. For this whole thing. So yeah, no, I mean, Matt Walsh is saying what you're saying, Allison. This, mm -hmm. The idea came first, and then you had the scientists, putting it in quotes, that were like, we're going to prove this. Yep. Yes, the, the initiative, the women saying, we want this, and then men saying, oh, okay, let's justify and make it uh, possible for you to get it. Yeah. But who started it? Yeah. Okay, I'm glad that he does say that. Okay, let's go. I'm just saying it, he could be wrong, you know. So her saying, "Well, let's see what Ma Matt Walsh says," you know, he well, could this be is, wrong. This her video is a response to Matt Walsh. Well, okay. Yeah, that's kind of the, what started this whole thing. <clears throat> let's play some more. The early pioneers of the gender theories that are currently taught in grade schools and universities. He was among the first to take the word gender out of the realm of, of grammar and apply it to people. Because until him, you know, we never said that people have a gender. Well, people have a sex, and gender is, words have gender. But he said, no, 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 uh, people have gender and sex. And he coined that. He also coined the terms gender role, gender identity, and sexual orientation. 
On that occasion, Matt was right, or largely right. The meaning of the word gender in English has evolved. I have described in at least one, possibly two previous videos, the philosopher Kathleen Stock's observations of four different ways in which the word is now used over and above its use in categorizing nouns in certain foreign languages. I'm just pausing it there for the banana. I don't know All how. Right. Okay. How long is she going to go into this freaking? Okay. This gender? section is about uh, four minutes. Well, of course, she agrees with it because she, she's now saying it's a man that did it. And it's interesting. Well, to but me not a feminist. This... And that's the important thing. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that money was likely a feminist. No, no, um, he, he and, was, but... Allison. It's just she's playing the same well, vocabulary Kinsey... games that these people always play, where it's like, I'm not talking about. Men, I'm talking about feminists, and feminist equals woman, unless, of course, the, the male feminist is saying something I like, in which case it is feminism. Well, Kin okay. Kinsey, Kinsey was, I think, some of his motivations were very feminist -y. Um, Like, he, he wanted uh, female sexual liberation and, you know, um, a so normalization of, of, a normalization of um, different sexual orientations and and, and he all created of those the Kinsey things. scale, which is think, basically I, the Eric Anderson model of measuring masculinity. Yeah, well, but and then he he also, you know, he said, well, uh, these traditionalist societies, you know, these white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, right? You know, they they think there's only one sexual equation, and it's penis plus vagina equals baby, and that's it, right? Um, you know, and, and doctors are telling, you know, men that if they give their wife cunnilingus, then it'll make her sterile and stuff like that. Right. No, and didn't. well, that's what he was claiming at the time. Right. Oh God, was, there's manuals from like the late eight, 19 or 1800s. No, that would yeah. be the 19th century, the late 19th century, early uh, 20th century in which they described how to pleasure their uh, their wives yeah like I, I've, I've seen these medical manual or even directives towards men about oh, well, how when the clitoris works and when was the kama sutra written yeah exactly or like this is ridiculous in fact in rome they thought that it was necessary for women to orgasm for a child to be conceived oh so you men have not been so stupid as to ignore women's pleasure up uh, oh of course yeah. Kinsey was the one good lover. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Of course. Of course. Right. Yeah. Well, he did. He did justify and uh, he 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 was an apologist for pedophilia too, right? So. Ugh. Well, even um, though even I've though heard... it grossed him out, apparently uh, he was like, well, it's just a way of being sexually. Yeah, he was trying to be uh, a lot, or, or probably trying to be ideologically consistent. Or he edgy. probably should have gone with his his gut there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the but the point is that it doesn't matter. These guys were responding to something. They yeah. didn't just come out of nowhere. They were responding to the feminist movement. They were either influenced by the feminist movement or they were feminist. Okay. Yeah. And it's funny how m women develop this desire. You know, they're like, I want this. And then men suddenly are like, oh, okay, well, how do we justify that desire and how do we get it for women? It's funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. Yeah. But, you know, okay. that's, that's, that's patriarchal, except when it isn't. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. it's useful. All right. Okay. Shall I play some more of this or do you want me to jump to a different section? No, no. Play well, a little finish, bit more. finish off the, let's find. All right. Let's Hopefully play some more of this. she gets to a conclusion. Yeah, okay. In the mid 20th century, the word was adopted by psychologists and psychiatrists to refer to the behavioral characteristics traditionally associated with people of one sex or the other. And this sexologist called John Money is the man most widely credited with starting it all, with a paper he wrote in 1955 in which he used the term gender role. That is the first reported usage of the word gender in any modern sense, and he defined it as, quote, 
all those things that a person says or does to disclose himself or herself as having the status of boy or man, girl or woman, respectively. And it's interesting to note that he included sexual orientation in that definition. Prob or I'm just pausing it there for the banana. All right, okay. play some more. Probably the most famous or notorious example of an experiment of blank slatism, the idea that everything is down to social conditioning is the David Reimer case. I'm sure many of you know this story, but for those who don't, the boy who is now referred to as David Reimer was born in Canada in 1965. And as a result of a catastrophic accident during circumcision as a baby, he lost- Something that probably that should never have happened to begin with. Yeah, but... it, it happens to uh, not an insignificant number of, of boys every year. In yeah. fact, it, the numbers are probably comparable to the numbers of women who were murdered by their husbands but yeah. We don't, yeah don't give a fuck no oh, you know what you know what's infuriating about it though um the reason uh both boys uh both david and his twin were scheduled for circumcision because they were like nine months old or something like that um is because they had developed phimosis well why did they develop phimosis because at the time the standard care right what the nurses would teach you at the hospital after you'd given birth was you always retract the foreskin and clean under it right and then let it you know let it go and uh, but the foreskin's actually fused it's like ripping off a fingernail cleaning underneath it right and then trying to stick it back on it's like that that's basically what they were telling mothers to do with their boys at that time. So Isn't of course they, astounding of course, how ignorant we yeah. are of male sexuality. Like we so are of course so these, these boys develop scar tissue and tightness of the foreskin and inability to retract it because you've literally injured, repeatedly injured the foreskin. Yeah. Like you, you, you clean your baby's penis the way you would clean his fingers. That's that's how you do it. You don't have to go in there with a fucking, you know, uh, a a wood gouge and freaking like go in under the fingernails and like you know really carve everything. No, you just you just wipe his fingers. That's how you do it. That's you wipe his penis, and that's then it, yeah. if there's if there's anything that got into, you know, the opening of of his. Uh, foreskin, uh, it, it'll be flushed out the next time he pees. Yep. Like, that but that's how that works. It's yep. really astounding how freaking ignorant our society is of male anatomy and oh, yeah, uh, no, like male that, the, sexuality. The one, the one doctor, prof, uh, professor, he was a teaching doctor, and he did a, a presentation at a university called The Elephant in the, in the, the Elephant in the Hospital. And, uh, and it was about circumcision. And he, he was like, you know, I went through med school. You're going through med school, right? And the only thing that's in the curriculum that they teach you about the foreskin is how to cut it off. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't teach you anything about the anatomy, the function of it, right? How it's supposed to work, why it exists. They don't, they don't teach you any of that. Right. And uh, and they only teach you how to cut it off. And so I'm here. But the to, problem. But I'm Karen. Here, the problem. OK, go ahead. I'm here to teach you. Right. About how things really work and how to advise your future patients in terms of whether they actually want to go through with the procedure. OK. And but the problem with our modern society, especially even even when Kinsey was around, the real problem. It's not that we have no freaking clue how men's anatomy works. In fact, there are still medical textbooks that have uh, orangutan anatomy from like the, the 1700s as male human anatomy. Um, it's not, that's not the problem. It's not the problem of our pig ignorance and the fact that we engage in cutting parts off of boys and men. That is not the problem. The problem is that men aren't regularly taught how to bring their wives to clitoral orgasm. Yeah. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Okay. All right, let's play some I'm more. Just, I'm just... Okay, yeah, yeah. Lost his penis, 
And a few years later, he became the guinea pig of Dr. John Money, who told his parents that they could raise him as a girl alongside his identical twin brother, and he'd never know any better. It was disastrous, and David ended up committing suicide. So did his brother. What Matt gets wrong is that he repeats quite a common misattribution of the term gender identity to John Money, but that, in fact, was coined by psychiatrists Robert Stoller and Ralph Greenson in the same sort of era. None of these men, Kinsey, Money, Stoller or Greenson, were feminist allies. They shared the conservative view held by Matt Walsh and by the commenters on my videos that certain qualities are either masculine or feminine, and it is this regressive notion on which transgender wait, 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 ideology she's just is fucked based. Something. She's just fucked. She's just done some verbal fuckery there. Yeah, she's she's saying that John Money is is basically or all these guys, and they're all men, by the way, probably because well, that doesn't really mean anything, but they're they have the quote, conservative view, end quote, on that gender. The conservative view that men and women are interchangeable? No, no that there are qualities view, that are inherently are masculine and qualities that are inherently feminine. Like they're, Oh, yeah, they're, except, for, except for the conservative view is that you actually should be raising boys to be boys and girls to be girls. Right? No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's, she's, yeah but the thing is that she has just attributed to them like she's attributed to them the belief that men and women are different fundamentally, right? Yeah. And now, but this is what she's saying, but there she's also saying that they are responsible for saying that men and women are interchangeable. Yeah. Okay, this this is this is a bunch of verbal fuck uh right yeah. here and we need to unfuck it. So let's just go a little bit further. Let's oh, let's see if there's right. like if she sticks a landing at some point here. All right. What feminists did and continue to do is challenged the very idea that some qualities are strictly masculine and others feminine. What feminists have Good always Lord. done is the exact opposite of the charge being made against them. What some second what? wave feminist theories can be what criticized What the hell do you for. think you did just there? What the hell do you think? Like, okay, all right. So these guys who, uh, who coined gender uh, theory were talking about men and women being different and that's why they're responsible for, for presenting the idea that men and women are interchangeable because feminists are the ones who believe that men and women are interchangeable. Therefore, they're not responsible for men and women being seen as interchangeable. Do you see what she just did? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. And, you know, what I find hilarious, too, is a lot of these fucking feminists, right? They, they have this one thing, right? They have one thing that makes them present as not super feminine like so they they well most feminists right and naomi wolf is in a class unto herself but you know she's got short hair right but she's got very feminine glasses she's got a very feminine pendant on you know it needs to be a little bit bigger female symbol yeah, it needs to be a little bigger to, to be, um, you know... More like, like Flavor a, Flav. Like, like, yeah. yeah. Um, she's got a very flouncy blouse on, right? She's... she's Like, this is one of the things, too, and I, I noticed this about Megan Murphy. I noticed this about all, a lot of these second-wave uh, style feminists. R J.K. Rowling, right? A lot of these these women is, you know, they, they might... They might concede one thing, right, about how they disclose their gender, right? They might concede one thing, but uh, they they don't. They're very very focused on looking feminine, on looking and appearing to be feminine, and it's like, I'm sorry, but I I just. I can't understand it. Then they then they're like, okay, so all these. Then they say, oh well, all these trans women, you know, like uh, they 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 usurp, right? We we don't think that there should be any differences between you know men men and women, you know, and how we're treated and all that. Well, 
if the way you dress and the way you present yourself and the way you go out in the world is different from men, then you're going to be seen as different. Like, I don't, I don't understand this. They're so all over the place. They're like, yeah, this is women's turf is women's turf. We should be allowed over there with men. Right. And we, we should be treated the same, but better. And, and I'm just like, Oh my God. Okay. All right. Here's, here's the thing. I think she's used, uh, I'm still hung up. I'm trying to figure out her logic. Because yeah, this really the... sounds like just schizo posting. Um, she seems to think that attributing, calling them conservative means that they're responsible for all the negative fallout of the gender ideology and not her. Yeah. Like, that's using a lot of magical thinking there. Mm -hmm. But here's the other thing. Like, if money actually didn't believe that you could change a boy's gender like that, then he, she was, he was basically just using this boy as an experiment. Well, yeah, I think... That's, he, like, horrifying. Yeah, no, I think he... Well, the boy was an experiment, but it was an experiment based on a premise that he wanted to prove, which was... You realize that, that if a girl had been used in this manner, we would never hear the end of it. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, there would be an entirely... Like, there would be a hyper-feminism based on the, the existence of... Uh, of um. I don't know. Breaking Any news, anymore. nigga. Breaking news. <laughs> I want to share this. I just learned oh. that P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, was arrested oh. in oh. connection to Tupac's murder case. Oh, dear. The, the, I didn't think that was ever going to get solved. <laughs> but, yeah, we, we don't know anything yet. But just so you guys know, in case you're wondering who killed Tupac well. um, and what that's all about. P. Diddy um, was arrested and escorted by police to, I don't know. So, so there you go. That's that just, like, I just learned about that while you guys were talking about this. this anyway, is what sorry, you do complete when we're talking. tangent. You're not, I you're not hanging on our every word. You're like well, at search and breaking news. No, I mean, I knew what you guys were. You, you, no, it, I just happened to cross I know, it. It I a, know. Okay. Anyway, so there you go. It's fine. I'm not really offended. Yeah, that's that's fine. Oh, okay, I was let's... muted. I was just gonna say that she's just giving you a hard time because uh, um, that's what she does. She gives everyone know, a hard time. Yeah. Well. Yeah, um, oh. I, did, uh, I, did I just want to point you out. when you first just... joined the call. Okay, I just want to point this out. Everything in the last two minutes has been absolute. In like, she has not made an Self... actual point. Self contradictory. It's self contradictory. These people, these men, were responsible for seeing men and women as interchangeable but they saw men and women as not interchangeable and they were conservative therefore i'm not responsible it's like um the chewbacca of a defense if you guys know tv tropes then you know what i'm talking yeah. about this is like completely incomprehensible but maybe at some point she actually pulls this together into something coherent so let's listen to him more maybe let's well, listen should to we some let, more yeah should, should we let the wookie win yeah okay let's keep going <laughs> perhaps is adopting the word gender and applying it to what they had previously referred to as sex roles. When I was growing up in the 1960s and towards the end of that decade becoming attuned to the women's movement, I never heard the word gender outside of its use in foreign grammar. I heard about women's roles, women's lot, and about how these were being challenged in a way that made a lot of sense to my very young ears. But so basically, I, what I you're think that gender was concept... used in academic circles, though. Like, there's a lot yeah, of like yeah. terminology that gets used in the academic places, but you're not going to find it in a protest or a picket line or something. Yeah, well, okay. and there was no pop culture at the time, or or like social media or anything like that, in terms of you know, like sea lioning and gaslighting and all these terms that we know, you know, that y you. There's no urban dictionary at the time, right? So if somebody used the term, you know, you're gaslighting me, you'd be like, what the fuck does that mean, right? So mm -hmm. you can't just go to Google in 1960 and figure out what the hell gender means. But the thing is that the point is that even if there was an academic word for it, they were using it as a political concept. 
Yes, they just a used a different term that was very pro-feminist. Okay, because so it was, she just, it was the just argument that, that women should not be pigeonholed into into yeah, that this is something that's socialized for women to do. Uh -huh. Okay, that this is something that's socialized to them, not gender and not based on biology. So basically on the street, they had a different term for that concept other than gender roles. It was uh, what she could just women's roles, uh, women's lot, whatever. But it's the idea is that it's not inherent to women. It is something that is put on them by society, specifically patriarchy. So she's just undermined her entire argument here. Yeah. The point is not that feminists use the term gender roles. The point is that men, women, feminists presented the idea that men or women are interchangeable in order to frame women's experience in the past as oppression rather than a result of biology. Yeah, okay? as, as oppression and th that... And you are that, focusing. Yeah. And that, that it was it was not not even just about biology. It was about, you know, the, the imposition of, like, men and women are basically interchangeable. In many and ways, women have yeah, and and this. yet women have this role put on imposed them. on them, yeah, yeah. And, but so she's basically saying that the people who are really responsible for this, even though she's saying that, yeah, this is we we uh, activists, we women on the street, we feminist agitators, we had the whole concept of gender roles. We just called it something else. We called it something um, women's roles, uh, or women's which lot, makes, or women's lot. Well, women's roles, okay. Fine. The, you're responsible for the consequences of that concept, regardless of what it is called. You can't shirk it just because you're playing shuck and jive with the name. Right? Semantics, you know, Allison. They matter. You know, Karen, if I shoot you in the head, right, but I call it giving you a bouquet of flowers, then I am not responsible for you being shot in the head. That's how it works. Brains on the wall by any other name would smell as sweet. Exactly. All right. That and what we have just said makes more sense than what she just said in the last five minutes. So, yeah, more. Let's okay. do more. Yeah. Uh, feminist theorists started to use the word gender to refer to social systems whose purpose was to keep women subjugated, meaning what women were required to do, what they were raised to do, and very often what they were forced to do. Oh, yes. And yes, you are responsible for that. You are responsible for the consequences of that. Uh, subjugated. 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 Chattel. Exactly. Chattel. Chattel. Women were basically chattel. But the point is, she's saying they were forced. They were socialized, whatever. They were forced to assume this role because it's not biological. So, yes, she's saying we did this. <laughs> like right now, she's saying, yes, we did this. We did yeah. do that. We did do it, but we're not responsible. We did yeah. it, but we're not responsible. Because we called is, it something else when we did it. Like, like is, the academics called it gender roles. We called it women's subjugation or women's roles or uh, social roles, right? We called lot. it something else. So we, we, we're, we, don't, we, we didn't shoot them. We gave them flowers, and we called it something else. That means we're not responsible, QED. Yeah, and all those brains on the wall smell just like a rose. Good lord. Okay, let's. All right, more. Let's let's it see if it's demonstration those of expectations that the women's liberation movement arose and thankfully has been quite successful at challenging a lot of these backward notions. I say thankfully yes, on behalf you were of the women who have been able to at framing biological differences as socialized and presenting yep. the idea that men and women were interchangeable yeah. you have just confessed to the crime lady you have confessed you have confessed you are a confessor. are you are you banging a table allison yes i am i'm sorry i'm doing it alex jones <laughs> i apologize i mean just uh, where do you go from here i know she's gonna go because she's got what another 14 minutes she's we're gonna about go to get other we're, we're about to get into some nuance Oh God! Oh good lord! Not the nuance. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. God. I think she's the next section is called feminists undermining sex roles. So she's going to refute this, of course. Um, do you want to do any like arm twisting, or should we wait? Yeah, till the yeah. End, we. Or what? I I need to mute and let my dogs out for their forty-five seconds of survival. 
<laughs> training. So okay, I'll, I'll I'm be, gonna. I'll be I will do. I think we have a uh, a a super chow, but that's all we've gotten so far. Yeah, hey, I don't guys, know if you want to wait till the end or if you want me to do that now. We, we can do it now because because Karen has break. to duck out. Okay. But I can also do like thank you for the person who put the cheaper chow in. Please, if you got five bucks, just put it in on our fundraiser, feedthebadger.com slash support. Just put the 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 URL in and consider it. Uh feedthebadger.com slash support. Just five bucks just to know that you know we're we're moving towards the goal. It's really appreciated. Um and then we do have a super chat. We might as well go. All right, I'm gonna read it. Now. Dane. Yeah gives us five dollars and says my mom tried to discourage me from lifting because she was worried i guess was worried i would injure myself my dad bought me the original bowflex adjustable dumbbells and a gold's gym bench i ignored my mom because she's 5'2 250 pounds diabetic has high blood pressure and can't walk without her feet and legs swelling up Every time she tried to stop me, I would look at her and tell her mom, you're obese and diabetic. Then I would lift my shirt, flex my abs, and say, I'm not. Side note, there are two types of phimosis. There is pathological and psychological phimosis. Uh, no, physi uh, I'm sorry, pathological and physiological uh, phimosis. Physiological phimosis is normal and healthy. Pathological phimosis is the bad type of phimosis. And it's caused by pig ignorant parents and doctors. Because they're both use they both use the word phimosis, doctors misdiagnose it because they don't know the difference, or maybe they do and they purposely give misinformation to cause the bad type of phimosis to earn a buck. Yet we're supposed to trust doctors. Well, I don't know, but I think trust in the science has gone way down. Um but thank you for that. And I think that's it for the super chows and other sort of yes, you know, indeed. monetized I can take the commentary. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, um, it's been a quiet day, guys. Are you out there? Is anybody out there? Are we all alone? People are watching. Yeah, we got we yeah. got an audience, but send some messages. Just... You can't all be agreeing with us. That's 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 creepy. It is like uh uh over a hundred if I if I oh, cool. so there's like seventy yeah there's like seventy five people or seventy something people on YouTube and there's also and this is amazing we got like forty two people on Rumble what's up Rumble oh, gang awesome. hey, um, Rumble yeah gang. it's Thank that's you great for, for um, viewing us that's yeah. good and all right so I think there's like let me a just couple give people you on a... Twitch too but anyway go ahead all right let me give you another heads up all right feedthebadger.com slash support to support us somebody somebody out there send put put five bucks in just. So I feel like I've done something today, or we have done something together. Feedthebadger.com slash support. And then also feedthebadger.com slash just the tip if you want to send us a message. Best way to get us, uh, give us a tip, and the best way for you to get your thoughts in our hot hands. That's probably the wrong way to phrase it. Yeah, well, Bor Borat almost didn't make it. He's still oh, limping. He's still walking on three legs. Oh, my Aww. God. He had to, he had to poop. He had to poop, he so did. he was out there for longer than 30 seconds. Oh, no. Yeah, oh. and... Oh. Uh, how how was Scipio? I'm, I'm gonna... I'm Kevin, gonna get, to get out of the toilet. <laughs> okay, shall we continue? Yeah, sure. Let's right, go. Let's play some more. To achieve more in life than the likes of Matt Walsh would have us do, obviously. Another comment from my channel, 50 years of feminists undermining sex roles will be hard to reverse. No, it won't be hard to reverse, it will be impossible to reverse because women have shown what we are capable of and we have won legislative reforms to stop people like you from discriminating against us on the grounds of our sex. So much as you and the other commenters and Matt Walsh might like to see oh, us return Lord. to being barefoot, pregnant, and change yeah, that the kitchen never sink. Oh, the anyway. sandwich mines and the baby mills. <laughs> oh, for the love of God. Never <laughs> happened, lady. Never happened. You know what actually happened? Women's roles got mechanized, and you had, you had a gigantic, massive tantrum over being now useless and defunct. We should never That's have invented dishwashers and, and laundry machines. 
Oh, it goes yeah. way back. You should never have invented the uh, spinning Jenny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, I've never have invented a sewing machine. Yeah, the, 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 the women should still be spinning. Like, here, that's the, but that's the thing. Like, they women faced obsolescence, and this is what we're dealing with now. Women lost their traditional jobs, and this is what we're dealing with now. This nonsense. Then yep. you decided, hey, we want men's traditional jobs. And men gave But not the shitty you, ones. But not the shitty ones, not the ones that actually require masculinity. Because that's the thing. There are still men doing the jobs that really only men do. Either because they just have higher uh, risk tolerance or because they have a higher tolerance for misery. Yep. Oh, just because just this just uh, day before yesterday, my son Jack calls me and he's like, can can you, uh, you know, drive me to the grocery store? Because it was like getting cold. It was like minus 30 or something like that Celsius. And uh, can can we do a shopping run? And oh, by the way, uh, last night they turned off our water. So can can you pick me up? we got to pick up a few gallons of water so that we can, you know, I can brush my teeth and, and flush the toilets and stuff. Right. And I'm like the water, right. He said, Oh yeah, no, there was a water main break in, in the back alley behind our house. And, uh, like it's a total freaking lake of solid ice. And uh, so they're digging a hole right now, and they sh- they've shut off the water, right? So there's a whole team of men out there. It's like minus 30 with a minus 35 wind chill, right? There's a whole team of men out there digging up the freaking back alley to replace the water main. And there's no women there, not a single woman. Like the worst thing that happened to the only woman affected was she couldn't have a shower on her day off. Yeah. And here's the thing. Like men are still doing those jobs. Yeah. Like she, she's grinning about this shit. But the only thing that women have taken over have been the jobs that are safe and comfortable. And those are not the jobs that keep the lights on. Yeah. So, no. It's, and they're not the jobs that keep the farms producing either. I mean, like and, and now, what, what did now, I see driving down through rural Alberta to get to Montana? What did I see outside every small town, like Nanton, Alberta, and stuff like that? Big billboards, not saying eat at Joe's Diner, but saying needed a veterinarian, excellent pay and benefits, right? Because the farm community, the farm cooperative, right, put all this money in, right? So basically, we we asked, like, what's the what's the remuneration here? Like, what's the what's the deal? And they said, oh, if we can get a vet who's who's actually going to, you know, deal with large animals and livestock, right, uh, a free house, okay, that, you know, like free housing, and it's a nice house. They showed me a picture, nice house, uh, $180,000 a year, okay, rain or shine plus overtime pay or house call pay, right? And full a full freaking uh thing of benefits pension plan life insurance all kinds of other crap the only problem is is you have to deal with you know cows and pigs and chickens and and stuff and uh and also you have to live in nanton you know which is away from the city and the movie theaters and the you know all of the yep yeah and yeah, and they can't find veterinarians because most veterinarians nowadays are women and they just want to look look after like dogs and kitties and maybe a parrot or two or a parakeet and um, and work in a nice office within office hours uh, in, mm-hmm. in a nice city, in a nice urban area where they have access to all the amenities. They don't want to yep. live in fucking Nanton. And yet, vet, uh, yet rural veterinarians are absolutely critical yeah. for food supply. And there's and, a, a, that, a huge shortage of them because ever since women completely dominated the field of, of like veterinary medicine in terms of training. Here's the thing. 
well, first of all, this is a good idea. Like if you're if you're a young man listening to this, consider going into veterinary medicine. Specializing uh, big in large animals, animals and livestock. Uh, specializing in large animals. You could probably make a, a really good killing. Now, this is this is um, but this is the case. Like this, this is the problem. Women going into the workplace haven't taken on their fair share of the shit jobs. Right? It wouldn't matter. Like incentivizing men to do this work with uh with the potential of having a, a wife and family because that's why men are doing this stuff guys yeah that, that, that's what they want that's why they participate in society and you know that you don't have to do that you don't have to be an incentive for a man if you're willing to do the 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 work or even capable of it because i just, i don't think that women are necessarily capable let's just say that men are more willing to do this work if you aren't going to do the work that men do that really does, like gets in the dirt, dirt and grit of keeping our society running, if you're not willing to do that work, then you have to incentivize the people who are, the men yeah. who are. Mm -hmm. And they are incentivized by family and a wife. So when women go off and do all the jobs that are comfortable and safe and easier and more social and give them access to all the entertainments they want, they're not either doing the jobs that need to get done or incentivizing the men who are doing them. And eventually that's going to call, that's going to bite us in our ass. Mm -hmm. That's going to, it's already started. They can't find big, big animal vets. Oh yeah. No, it's find... that, that guy in Australia, he was like, um, he basically created a scholarship fund and it didn't, it, it wasn't for men only, but there was a preference for uh, male, any a male student coming from a rural background with an interest in large animal practice, right? Those were the three categories that would get preferential treatment in terms of applying for this scholarship. And the feminists lost their fucking minds. But, you know, in the article where they're like, you know, the, uh, not the Sydney Morning Herald, the Australia, the ABC, Australia Broadcasting uh, Corporation or whatever it's called, right? They, um, they, were, they were bemoaning this, right? It's unfair to women, right? At the same time, they're basic, they, they said in the article that 95% of medical students right now are women, uh, of veterinary medicine students are women. Right. So and it's like, well, of course, women don't want to stick there. Women would rather do wildlife rescue. OK. Than large and animal practice, you know, on farms and stuff. Right. Cows. I mean, at least with wild animal rescue, you know, you rescued a bald eagle and it was so cool. And then you like reintroduced it to the wild and you felt like you were really, you know, whereas uh, you give prestige. birth to a breech calf by like sticking your arm up to the shoulder up a cow's vagina. Right. And pulling the calf out by its back feet. Right. Uh, it's not glamorous. Yeah, not really. It's not romantic. Not really and 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 it's it's dangerous and unpleasant. So it's like. You're not getting anything, you know. It's and the it's funny just thing not, is, is that not fulfilling. The way men are, the way men are 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 from what I can tell from from having observed, is that it being dangerous and unpleasant might even be a reason to do it. Yeah. Because because you take a sense of of a pride in overcoming that kind of dangerous, unpleasant situation. And the well, men even think for about some women, that way. but but yeah, they, they want to do it on their own terms. Degree. They want to do but it on their lesser, own terms. You know, yeah, like they, they want to go rock yeah. climbing w with all of the, you know, all the harnesses and stuff like that. Right. You know, and, and ooh, I did that. And, you know, ooh, they want to go skiing yeah, but that, or whatever. But there still is that element of prestige, whereas I think guys yeah. would be more more willing to accept dangerous, dirty, overcame that. I help somebody in need. Yeah. The end. Yeah. And uh, and women have not like she says, oh, women have taken. No, you haven't. No. And you, what has happened is a whole bunch of jobs that are safe and comfortable, but not particularly compatible with raising children, that's the big thing, yeah. have opened up for you. You've taken them and you, you haven't taken men's jobs. You haven't actually challenged gender roles. 
you're still doing the female gender. It's yeah. just that you're doing it outside of the house because yeah. because the various nests, various uh, harems have been constructed for you to do whatever it is you are in, which you mm -hmm. demand. Like you mm -hmm. demand comfortable workplaces. You demand excessively safe workplaces. You demand men conform their behavior to your expectations. To in those make you feel comfortable and safe. To make you feel comfortable. Like this is this is this this isn't challenging a gender role. This is leaning into one mm -hmm. really big time. And again, yeah, society will do this for you, lady, for as long as it can afford it. But the problem is the more you go into the state run harems, the less you're out there either doing the work that needs to get done or incentivizing men to do it. Do you remember? So eventually you, that work isn't going to get done. Do you remember that book Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg, CEO of Facebook? Right. She did a TED talk about it. And one of the chapters. Ban was, Bossy Don't... Woman. Who's um, the Ban Bossy person. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. She was. But. Anyway, she, she said that one of her chapters was called Don't Leave Until You Leave, right? And she was like, if you really want to get ahead in the corporate world, right, don't leave until you leave. You know, I, she's like, I see all these young women, you know, they're like in their late 20s, early 30s, and, and they're already basically planning their career around like they don't have boyfriends yet they're not married yet they don't have kids yet right but they're planning their careers around that and making career decisions based on that and you can't do that if you want to get ahead because you can't basically and this is what like my sister you know she md in a medical administration blah 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 right she she geared her, tailored her career around the fact that she had kids and that meant turning down certain promotions, turning down certain positions, um, basically uh, limiting her travel, her, you know, sort of international travel quite a bit and all of that stuff, right? Especially since her husband was a pilot. And so he was away for lengthy stretches of time. And so even having a live-in nanny wasn't really enough to compensate for that with, without my sister being able to come home most nights and and be home in the evenings right she couldn't just pick up and go on a trip and uh so but i'm i'm sitting there thinking well that's fucking selfish right okay so you take all of these promotions right and you fill all of these high high level positions and all of that you climb the greasy pole right and then you just fuck off to have kids like, how is that fair? How is that fair to your the company you're serving, the company that you're working for? How is that fair to the people who you work with, right? That you, you just plan your career as if kids and marriage are not part of the plan and what you want to, how you want to be within kids and marriage, right? Not part of the plan. And you just go full bore and then you pull the rug out from under everyone. And go like, yeah, I'm on maternity leave now. Fuck all y'all. See you in three years. All right. Shall we? I got a couple more super chows, but would you rather yes, play I... more of the video? Um, um, my doggo is having a bit of an existential crisis because the power tool is being used in the house. Oh. So um, I don't know. Did your do your doggos have issues with power tools? Uh, um... Jojo avoids like drills and vacuum cleaners but he doesn't freak him out he just stays away you see that... while i'm talking about these issues my husband jonathan has been fixing the weather stripping in the door thus actually demonstrating exactly yeah. what we're talking about there you um, go like my, my dogs really don't like the leaf blower but that's because i blast them with it yeah he doesn't like the okay he doesn't like the um um drill I think it's the it's really the sound. It's the sound, Pump. yeah. That's usually my how dogs. It is. My dogs don't care about the sound. They just don't want to get blasted with wind. Yeah, I well, got... maybe maybe don't do that to them. I got um, a soup. No, I, that's I I like doing it. It's it 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 gives me a tiny little bit I, I, of I'm cruel getting more pleasure. Of this, I'm understanding of your dog's psychology here, Karen. 
Okay. No, they love me. They're lying here right next to me because it's where they feel safe. So yeah, Richard, my dog but is I got I gotta me. keep them on the toe on their toes. In hopes of getting entertainment. All right, keep going, Brian. Just, All right, just so do Richard Bier gives us $5. I just want to read it before it disappears uh, and says, Does conservative mean failed Austrian painter to Naomi? I don't know who Naomi. You mean Naomi Go. Wolf? Wolf. Did we talk about her? Come. I missed that. I, I mean, I know earlier, earlier, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look. Okay, and then Look. another $5 from okay. Zeranx. Go. And he says, Allison says men should go into veterinary medicine. Okay. They'll make a that, killing, oh you. No. That, well, no. you know, but... It was a pun. That, he was, uh, yeah, he, I know. He's you'll accusing make you killing. of punning. Yeah, well, it's because... Cute, but you know. Because because what do they do with the cows and the chickens and the pigs? Hmm? They kill them. But, um... Well, the veterinarians don't, the pun, but... Moving on from the pun. The, 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 let's, let's put it... Let's be honest. Women haven't taken over men's role. They no. haven't. They've just taken over the, the nice assume. ones, the juicy, the juicy ones, but the ones that are safe, the ones that are taken, easy. The women have not actually taken over men's role. What has actually happened is that men are no longer recognized for their role. Yeah. Because it, w women felt that that was insulting. Feminists felt that that was insulting. So men still do everything that needs to be done to keep society running. But now they just don't get any recognition for it. Oh, you know what was That's... hilarious is is when they were redoing the streets outside. So they like they did they replaced the sidewalks, they replaced the pavement, they replaced all the street lights, they they put in a new sidewalk, right? They like really went all out and put in new signage around like these corners after years of me complaining about uh most of the intersections being not controlled with any kind of signage at all and collisions happening regularly um, because people think, well, if I don't have a sign, a yield sign or a stop sign, then I must be like the other guy probably does. Right. And, uh, but I was talking with the workers one night and, uh, and the flag person, the flag person, she was like, uh, Tammy Faye Baker. She she had nicely styled hair, frosted tips, you know, uh, full face of makeup, those Cardi B fingernails, you know. She's part of the crew. Part of the crew. She stands there with the sign that says slow or stop. Yeah. So it's like, the, yeah, she's part of the crew. And then feminists will look at the statistics and say, well, women are responsible. Yeah. And, uh, and also radical feminists will look at those statistics and say that 20 percent of women who are responsible for the uh, construction work. Yeah. They are capable of taking over the entire job if mm -hmm. we've ever, you know, ever got to get rid of the men the way that we want to. And it's like, no, 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 no. No, and I've only and ever also, known. I've only ever known one female heavy equipment operator, like who drives a grader or a backhoe or something like that. You know, you know more of them if they're in like the rural areas. But I don't think these women would want to create huh? to essentially destroy their lives for lesbian uh, or sorry radical feminist separatists. No, I don't think they'd want to do that for you. And it's 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 actually incredibly entitled for these these academics and these activists to say, hey, wouldn't it be awesome if we put if we made these women's lives completely unlivable for our theories or our yeah, ideas? Yeah, yeah. Like, know, I'm, like no. I'm I'm not saying that women need to like get out there no. in the cherry pickers We're and done. fix the power lines, but but what I'm saying is the fact that there are men who are still willing to do that is pretty fucking amazing. Particularly how they've been treated for the last like 40 years. Probably more like 60 years. Okay. So. Shall we, shall we continue? Yes. Let's continue. Right. Good. Happening. 
Remember, it was feminism, gender, social construct over biological nature that has created this mess. Trans is its logical conclusion. Right. So you think that women challenging your regressive ideas about what is feminine and proving ourselves as capable as men in many different fields would inevitably be okay okay again women. if you had proven yourself as capable as men this there, there would be no problem because you would be doing the large animal veterinary work you would be doing the backhoe work you would be doing the sewer work you would be doing the line work you would be half and he would have done that without asking to be half of CEOs necessarily, right? Because you all ask to be CEOs and there's actually far, the, the ratio of female CEOs to female trash collectors oh. is like one, is like there's 20 female CEOs. Like it's it's huge. Yep. Like there, there, you are much more likely to see a woman in a boardroom proportionately than in a trash collecting or any of the nasty jobs. Yep. And so you need to look at that ratio. That's yep. where the that's where the quote unquote oppression lies. The ratio for men is terrible when you look at it in terms of women. For men, there's about uh for every one CEO, there's about 2000 men in the absolutely worst jobs. For every one C female CEO, there's about maybe 20 women in the absolute worst jobs. That's the ratio you need to look at. But the ratio shall also explain something else. Please be quiet, dog. The ratio also explains works in the chat. Else. <laughs> the ratio shows how much women are actually involved in the dirty, uncomfortable, unfashionable, un. Uh, what is it? Like the, the, the not the the stuff that has cachet. The, the unglamorous jobs. The unglamorous jobs, and those are the jobs that matter. Okay. So no, women haven't taken over men's role. All they've done is taken away men's recognition for their role. So this is bullshit. All right, let's keep going. All right, let's okay. keep going. Because, I mean, if what you see as masculine is innate in men if it's inherent to being a man if it's part of their biological nature why would any man want to be perceived as feminine why would any man want to be a woman it doesn't sound very logical to me could you perhaps contemplate the possibility that those qualities wait 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 wait, 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 wait what what were you not listening okay so she's she's no no what well, i've been listening i've just this is more fuck Yep. Did you just see the level of fuck that she just tried to get away with? Language. Like, she's saying that um, if you believe in gender differences and that men are men and have their own unique qualities, how can you then say that men would ever want to be women? Um, but, you, but, you, but that's what they're saying. They're saying that this is happening because there's no recognition. <laughs> of the unique qualities of men, or there's no recognition of the biological differences and that some men are buying into that. I don't think this supports your argument. Yeah, I well, mean, and, and then on top of that, like the, the qualities that you showed, you know, earlier, that she showed earlier, right, of, of men are so overwhelmingly negative, right, or spun to be negative you know, aggressiveness rather than assertiveness and cruel rather than maybe uh, cold or something like that, right? Or uh, stoic. And uh, so you're, you're looking at, you know, like the, the role of men has been framed as, as, uh, as basically a crime against humanity, right? So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, so like these, the, and keep in mind, the only people that she, the only trans people that she really cares about are, are the ones who are, are, trans women. are trans women, the ones who are invading uh, female spaces. Can I get you to hold this for a second? You hold your thought for a second? Because mm -hmm. there's something that I'm trying to point out. She's appealing to 
this idea that men and women are different and these conservatives. So she's basically saying, conservatives, you think that men are, are men and they have their own unique qualities. Why then? How do you explain the existence of trans women? Well, how, how can you appeal to concert? Like you're basically saying you have to be wrong because trans women, right? So she's, she's saying men and women have to be interchangeable because trans women, but also, um, that's bad because trans like do you see the fuck oh god i don't know i'm saying this i'm i'm in desperate straits to to understand the pretzel logic that this woman is presenting well you know um he's casting a spell with words analytical yes. and logical were in the blue column well, I, but the thing is, there is a rationale to what she's doing. She's trying to win an argument. I'm trying to figure out how how all of the elaborate gymnastics she's doing is winning the shootout. Like, how does she think that this is winning at all? Like, ugh. because again, like she's saying, okay, well, you guys believe that men and women are, aren't interchangeable. Oh. Then how do you explain the existence of trans women? Because... Men and women are interchangeable. Because you guys have been saying that men and women are interchangeable. So she's saying, okay, conservatives say that men and women are not interchangeable. Thus, conservatives can't explain the existence of trans women, which means that men and women are interchangeable, <laughs> but that women, trans women are... But the, reason, but the reason why trans people exist is because of conservative notions. Well, it gets it gets darker than that. She suggests something okay, darker than like that. Okay, people like this make me feel like I'm stupid somehow. All right. Well, okay, I think you're being think, gaslit. I think that's why people. I think people get stupider when they listen to things like this. Just give me one moment. Um, I just need to go push a button. All okay, right. just let's listen to a bit more. All right, let me put her back on screen. All right, here we go. Julian and those we call feminine are largely socially constructed in the sense that we attribute the masculine ones to men and the feminine ones to women. And that's why girls who like climbing trees are called tomboys and that there are men who feel more comfortable with tastes and behaviors generally perceived as feminine and the other way round. And there's nothing wrong with that. If we allowed people a bit more freedom of self-expression, why would anyone feel the need to LARP as the other sex? Agreed. And I think the answer to that. Yeah. Except here's the thing. You don't allow a certain yeah. amount of freedom of expression. Here's the thing that you exclude from men. And this is something that I was discussing on Twitter. I think you probably will like this, Karen. Oh. So I, I, I tweeted this thing because sometimes I do something that on the surface, I guess, looks stupid. I said, if men are such a, a a burden on married women then why do we consider single women single mothers worse off yeah than like married mothers and then i got a whole bunch of, of people and some i write women who are like yeah but men are like a second unpaid second shift and i'm like yes then once you get rid of your unpaid second shift shouldn't You're you unlike a married be woman, seen as lucky yeah, well, shouldn't you be able to use that time that you freed up to be even more financially successful than a married woman? Yeah. Oh, they hate that. They oh, freaking yeah. hated that. And there was one woman who said, well, my partner was abusive. I'm like, I, I, have, a, I have a sus on that one, but we'll, let's go. Let's move on. Yeah. And when I left, it was like a weight off of my shoulders and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, apparently you're not getting this. I'm not talking about your specific instance. I'm saying that in general. Men are an unpaid second shift on their wives, that they're, they're a net negative on their wives. And then she went on and she said, yes, yeah, of course, yeah. What men men uh, cause, force women to do unpaid housework and blah, blah, blah. So essentially asserting my point. And I said yeah. to her, you know, there really doesn't need to be much more said than this. You want to use your femininity to justify moral superiority over men. Okay. What, what I find what I find hilarious about that the unpaid second shift, right? Okay, mm -hmm. um, or the unpaid in my case, right? The unpaid first shift, and it is, well, I mean, it is unpaid technically. I mean, like, 
I don't get a paycheck. The government doesn't take its slice out of that, right? I I just uh, I just have open access to uh, all of my husband's money, and I can spend it however I I see fit because he trusts me to not be irresponsible with it. And it's like he makes what a buck and a quarter a year plus benefits, right? So getting close to like 150 and and it's uh, like when you total everything up and and i'm i'm like i don't need to work he's a lot of work right the house is a lot of work and uh, and what i do online that's also work right so and i don't have to get paid for any of that and you know like when when we went to uh the big christmas party they call it a christmas gala because there's like all this fancy schmancy entertainment and there were like four thousand people there and uh for his work and one of his co uh one of his the managers right or the directors right she's like oh well you know hi karen nice to meet you you know what do you do and I said, well, I'm an angry white woman who wants to talk to the manager. And she laughed and I said, no, 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 that's not what I do. I, I just spend his money. That's my job. And she thought that was hilarious. She thought both of those things were hilarious, actually. But it's like, I am so freaking lucky. I am so lucky. You know, and I guess I took a gamble because he had all these health problems when we first got together. And I was just like, no, no, I see potential here. And uh, and he just and he does what he loves. Right. That's the thing. Like, I would never ask him to like. He hasn't done anything different in his career because of any demands on my part. Right. I just mostly I sock money away. and. Uh, but it's it's like this is it's not a burden it's not a burden bringing him a coffee in bed every morning it's really not it's not a burden packing him a lunch or if you don't have any self respect oh uh, right. yeah 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 no and yeah. it's it's just like uh, and you know and i manage our money and i manage our investments and i manage our savings accounts and i manage like all of that stuff and so it's just like, yeah, no, um, he doesn't even know his online banking passwords. Okay. So the point of all of this, the point of that... all of this is that it's, yes, it's no, no, a, I was going to say close to full-time job, but it's definitely not, not remunerated free room. Yeah, board, I know, but all they're the spending saying, money I want, but they're saying that their husbands who probably have significantly less health challenges than yours and, uh, various natures and mm -hmm. they probably put significantly less into his career than you do because i know you've also helped him with reports and other kinds and correspondence and stuff mm -hmm. they say that their husbands are a net negative a net drain they're just a second shift that's unpaid and i'm saying if they you know like the, if that's the case then why do we yeah. feel sorry for single moms and then a single yeah. mom came out and said my husband was abusive blah 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 but then also said but yeah the average man is a is a net drain on the average woman and i told her and this is this is this gets back to what she's saying about well why can't you know if everybody can if their expression can be whatever it wants why do you have to identify as a woman well maybe that they think that that's their expression but regardless my point my my statement to this woman was you want to use your femininity as a means to exert moral dominance over men the ma yeah. fact that you are a woman a feminine woman or a, a, in a feminine role you want to use that to exert moral dominance over men and mm -hmm. she was like i don't understand what you're saying i'm like well because you're an idiot but regardless um so but this is this is the thing there is something in the gender role that that is only allowed women and that is to exert that kind of moral dominance over men yeah to essentially make men morally lesser than themselves through all of these unproven false allegations of moral of men's malfeasance and burdensomeness yeah okay? no and, and when you when you look at when you look at who polices who polices men 
socially? Women. Who polices women socially? Women. Women. Yeah. Well, men police each other socially as well, but usually based on what women want. Yeah. And this is the thing. This is the thing. This is what men, trans women get that men don't. And this is maybe this is their expression that they want is that they do not want to be morally bullied by women. And when they become trans women, that stops completely. And in fact, it reverses. And it doesn't stop completely. There are still women like this and the J.K. Oh, Rowling yeah. of the world and the Megan Murphy. Yeah, there are. But, yeah, there's but, all, there's but then they get banned from more. Twitter and stuff. So Yes. Think about that. Think about that. Think about having spent all of your life being morally bullied by a woman like this. And that you're tired of it. And then, then she beaks off on Twitter and she gets booted. Yeah. Or she beaks off on YouTube and she gets booted. Finally... As a person, you know, who doesn't really identify as a man, finally, the boot is off your neck. Yeah. And there, so when she's talking about, oh, well, we should be all be able to express our genders in whatever way, bullshit. Bullshit. You still reserve for women the right to express moral superiority over men. Oh. <laughs> With all of the bullshit that you've just brought up. And other women. And other women, yes, okay. Like over right. everybody. I got a I got a super chow again from Great Indoors. I'm just gonna read it really quick. It gives us ten dollars. Thank you, Great Indoors, and says talking about veterinarians. Has any has any of you seen Doctor Pole? His female colleague is one of the few who actually worked on farm animals. Doctor Brenda Grettenberger, and to no surprise, she was buff and had a very male attitude. Sounds like a big German woman to me. So yeah, I, I believe a that. Ukrainian peasant. And then we got, yeah. and then we got another one from Richard Bier for five bucks, and he says, um, "So a woman who doesn't have a husband doesn't have any dishes that need to be washed or floors that need to be swept because the house just stays perfectly clean." Oh, it does. It does. Yeah. No, it it's self cleaning. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Without without this husband here, I wouldn't ha- ever have to do laundry. I think I understand some of the deeper motivation behind myself. this. Uh, and it came from that 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 video we did with Teal Deer, where that one feminist really showed her ass and said, it, "What you know that it, that she felt oppressed by children." I think what's happening is these women are having children, and they're discovering that family life is exhausting, and it's a, it's a huge amount of investment of time and energy, and men are not taking it all away. And making it go away. Yeah, that, but that, that men can't do everything for them. That women actually have to step up and do something. If, and they resent men for that, even if it's equal, even if they're both equally doing the same amount. Any amount over nothing is men's fault. Any amount that women have to do over nothing is men not doing it for them, thus men's fault. Well, okay. I will say that motherhood can be exhausting, oppressive all of that but at the same time um you choose like i see mothers who choose to do unnecessary work right like i i uh you know i was talking with some of the moms at school when my when my older two were in elementary school and you know the one mom she was like oh you know, we got home from the beach, you know, from Ledge Point and, and, uh, and, and the kids were so dirty. They had to have a bath and it was like 10 o'clock and, oh, it was like horrible, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, so just make the beds in the dark before it gets light out in the morning. Then you won't see how dirty the sheets are. Mm-hmm. Like it's just clean dirt. Like it's, it's just dirt. Yeah. Like, why yeah. are you making life difficult for yourself, right? Or, or they're like, oh, you know, my daughter's in ballet and she's like, blah blah blah, and this one's in this activity, and oh, I have to do the fundraising, and it's like, no, no, you don't. You don't have to do all of that. You like, you've chosen to. Yeah, you've, you've chosen to put your kids in all these 
expensive extracurricular activities that require a huge amount of time investment from you, right? And you got to, oh, I have to get them here and there and everywhere. And it's like, yeah, you know what I do? When I get sick of my kids, I boot them out the front door and tell them to go across the street to the park. That's what I do. Like, go out, be outside, yeah. you know, avoid the pedophile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't take the candy. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. You, you know me. what he you know what he looks like. He's the one with the key. You know his modus dog. operandi. Yeah. You know his modus operandi. Don't get suckered in or the evolution took its took its toll. Yeah. Or, no, like so <laughs> even my, Darwin. Yeah, no, my kids were like, you know, Mom, I'd like an apple. Well go get one. You got a piano tied to your ass? What? <laughs> Yeah, well, it, I women do make a lot of their own uh, yeah. work. One, yeah. I, I remember this one. Um, here's the other thing: if men stay at home, women still complain. And oh they yeah. Complain. There was this one thing that me and Brian did. This one uh, where this this woman was complaining about all the shit that she had to do for her husband. Uh-huh. And of course, her husband was unbelievable. Like he was a modern. Like, I don't even know what she, he would, he would, even though he was the primary caretaker, he would take kids so that she could do yoga to, to relax oh, on the yeah, weekends. Re- oh, and, yeah, 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 no. yeah, that. And, and he, she was still fucking complaining about him because it never ends, you know, with, with women like this. Oh, no, 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 no. This, he, he just needed to the, put his fucking foot down and say, you know what, bitch, enough. Yeah, like, well. It, unbelievable but but here's the here's the really egregious thing one of the commentators on her nonsense on her complaints said that um she was a stay-at-home and there was another man who was a stay-at-home and when men stay at home they are still slacking like when men do the 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 unpaid second and third shift of women they're still slacking and you know what she she used to to justify it the fact that you know, he would send the kids out to play instead of um, supervising them completely. And the kids did the chores that he was supposed to be doing. So I'm like, oh. look at this. So he's actually he's a better literally training them to become adults. He's, he's literally training his children to become adults. <laughs> and because he's actually supposedly benefiting, but I'm guessing that there was a no. Your barking's not going to get you anywhere. Okay. Because he was um, he was actually training his ch- his children to take on adult responsibilities, and it, this is front loaded stuff. If you if you want a kid who is able to do this stuff, you have to put a lot of time in to take to train them, and then get through all of the learned helplessness and all of the like the 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 the. Or you just of throw them in the deep end when they're like two and a half. Yeah, uh, but regardless. You, and then if it, they survive, it's like it's like the Thunderdome, but uh, you know, For at least yours, one of them yeah. leaves. Okay, but he put that work in, and now he's benefiting from having a little team of co, you know, people that are kids to help him with his chores. They're learning to be adults, but he is a lazy bum because of it. Yeah, because he's not doing what the 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 female stay at homes are doing with with all the chores oh right? i gotta cut i gotta cut the grapes in half otherwise it's yes. a choking hazard right and oh i have to pick up the living room three times a day right do you know what your kids do right okay they don't want to play with their toys they just want their toys to be spread across the living room that's what they want and that's what they will have and if you can't handle that right like i would pick up twice once in the afternoon before my ex would come home from work. Shut up, Mrs. Wu. And once uh, before bed, just in case somebody needed to get up and, you know, make it sound like safe and sound to the toilet. Right. But, you know, I, I did not like there this whole idea of like, oh, I got to make everything perfect and everything has to be. Yeah, no, it was like. 11 months old, Jack first, you know, I used to cut up his apples for him. And uh, 11 months old, when he started walking, he figured out how to open the fridge, open the drawer, 
grab an apple, take a bite out of it, right? Eat it properly. Close the fridge. Close the drawer and the fridge, which is something that my stepson's never figured out how to do, right? And I was like, well, I'm freed from this tyrannical chore from now on, right? Like, I, I was just like, anytime they they figured out how to do something on their own, I was like, oh, that's so great, right? They put on their shirt and their shoes backwards, but, you know, I didn't have to put it on for them. So let's all go out to the grocery store. Like, I, I was yep. just I was just like, yeah, no. Every single time they learned something new, that was the end of me doing it for them. No. And so it was it was just like, yeah, no. My job as a mother, like I, I had a job as a housewife and a help meet and you know, like doing stuff, building things so that, you know, putting in the labor to renovate and stuff like that, right? So that we wouldn't have to pay anybody to do it. I put in a lot of work in those areas, right? Because my kids were independent very early, right? And they were independent very early because the moment they showed any inkling of wanting to do things themselves, I was just like, yeah, you can do that. You can cut yeah, your own that's probably, that's probably what this guy did. Yeah. He just encouraged independence in his children. Yep. And that, and somehow that became him being a lazy bum. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is that's what you're supposed to do as a parent. I yeah. assume, is to, is to teach your Prepare kids. Prepare your deal child, with... your children for adulthood. And it's, it's really like these women really told on themselves with that nonsense. Mm -hmm. But anyway, even that wasn't good enough. Okay. Let's, let's, let's listen to a bit more. Cause I, I don't, I don't remember the, the sequence of diversions that got us here. Oh, I do have thank yous, though. All right, Mrs. Wu, can you be quiet? That lies at least partly in autogynophilia, and you can't blame feminists for men's fetishes. There is no logical follow-through from the premise of women rebelling against their prescribed subordinate okay, wait, role. Wait a second. Wait, oh, we can't blame feminists for men's fetishes. How about the fact that you say that men desiring women is objectification? Mm -hmm. And some kind of criminal act men do to women. Like you're, you're introducing a lot of conflict between men and their sexual desires for women. One way they can resolve that is by becoming a woman. Yeah, by dressing like one and being attracted to themselves in the mirror. Like, lady, think about that. You have infused a whole bunch. I, I would actually put uh, even more necessarily than just uh, the... the um, the, trying to get away from the the moral bullying that feminists do, I would put the autogynophilia on feminist put on feminist doorstep too, oh. maybe even more because they're the ones who are making it, uh, making the greatest amount of conflict between men and their desire for women. You guys are saying it's wrong, okay? Well, I I hate to tell you this, but men desiring women is a pretty powerful instinct. And if you tell a social species that one of their really powerful instincts is wrong, you're going to put a lot of fuck into their brain. Oh, yeah. And they may find some Language. really weird, weird way of resolving that fook in their brain. The, Can the, I use the word fook? The fook. Oh. The fook. Kevin's, they, eating gonna... the, Kevin's eating the spicy peanut. Ah. They, they, they're going to find ways to resolve the fook in their brain that you put there because of all this objectification and all of this, oh, uh, men are harming women just by having sexual desire for them. Like, yeah, this, this, you really can be put on your doorstep. I'm surprised that the conservatives haven't, no, actually, I, I'm not surprised. Okay. Um, but yeah, this, this is even more clearly the, the, the causality for autogynophilia even more clearly lies at the fault, like at, at, at the fault of feminism. Yeah, it's, it's so harder. Do more, the or do you want to do some is, thank yous or what? The funny thing, I will do some thank yous. I just want to say the funny thing is, is that it seems to be harder to get rid of men desiring women than men identifying as men. So if they can feel free to desire women by either becoming a woman 
you know, and then then they are less threatening and they get to desire women because it's not an oppression of, of them or by simply desiring themselves as a woman. Okay, are you banging, Allison? Yes, I'm banging, I'm sorry. I'm not banging, I'm banging the... I, okay, I'll stop, I'm sorry. Why is okay. it really... No, 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 I was just I was just wondering if there was something wrong. Okay, listen, Mrs. Wu. Okay, you need to stop. You've been out. Just go, 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 go do something. Find... It isn't a wooing. Something to do. She thinks that because I'm talking, we're she and I are having a conversation. So she's she's trying to provide her side of it. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, no. Uh, and and to be fair, right. she she is constantly trying to evade sexual assault by the little dog. So. Yeah, no, he's anytime she's standing up, he's like going for the cooch. So, I you know it's funny, like how. They don't see how turning that instinct, because you know, like your your dog is just a male dog, right? Yeah, turning intact, that instinct, intact male dog. Yeah, trying to make men see their heterosexuality <laughs> as a disease. Yeah, yeah, might be causing some really weird behavior, like yeah. autogynephilia. Yeah. You know that that might be the source of it, right? And again, I'm not talking about all of the women or the trans women, you know, who would have been trans in the 1500s. Yeah. Right. Like that, 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 they, that genuinely have this, this situation where they feel like they identify as a woman because yeah, they, they got the, uh, the, uh, third interstitial freaking something. Estrogen of the, flood. Of the hypothalamus or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that's, I'm not talking about them. And it's funny because I think they just want to live their life and all of this cra this this tempest around them. Yeah. Um, and I'm not, but honestly, the 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 trans maxers you can lay right on feminist feet. You know, the ones who are just like, well, you know, if I can get a better deal by identifying as a woman, I'm going to do that. The autogynephiliacs you can lay on feminist feet, and you can definitely lay on feminist feet this idea that gender role doesn't exist, or sorry biological differences doesn't exist not just to say that men and women are intercha interchangeable so men women should have access to men's roles but also as an underpinning for their allegations of oppressions throughout history so oh. instead of instead of it just being a, a function of biology women were forced into their role yeah. but that that's necessary by men for the entire feminist corpus yeah like you get rid of that and it's if you actually recognize that Historically, men and women's roles were a result of biology, and men actually took the dangerous, you know, self-destructive and uncomfortable roles in order to serve women better. And maybe, yeah, in, in, in response, we gave them recognition and maybe said, oh, yeah, you're, you're the head of the household. Woohoo. Go you. Yeah. You know, like, but, you know, we gave them this recognition. That doesn't change the fact that they were the front line and they were the ones bringing home the, through their labor, incredibly dangerous labor in many cases. They were the one protecting and providing for the women. Mm -hmm. It's like the, you, they have the causality completely reversed. Yeah. She says this is men oppressing women. No, this is biology. Mm -hmm. This is this is the biological reality of being a human woman that men are trying to mediate. And I think they've honestly for, been yeah. trying to compensate for, and I think they've honestly been trying to compensate for throughout human history, yeah. up into the current day, where they are trying to give women a sense of purpose by giving up their own identities and their own jobs. Well, what's, like, what's the one thing about the Muoso, right, in China? Okay, like they don't, they don't, they don't have a patriarchy, right? You know, there's, there's no such thing as marriage and all of that, right? And the fatherhood doesn't exist. Kevin, get out of the kitchen. Hey, out. And, uh, but, okay, so the men are still the ones who slaughter the pigs. The men are still the ones who do the, you know, the hunting and the fishing and the dangerous stuff, right? The men are still the ones who do the, like, the really heavy lifting, the building, uh, building of ho homes and boats and things like that, right? And uh, and the women, 
okay, there's a matriarch in each village who runs the village, right? And she decides who does what work and who gets what remuneration for it, right? She's like, lit it's li literally like little tiny villages of centralized government. Mm. But who drives the livestock to the markets over wet and muddy and dangerous roads? Men. Who does all of the external politics, you know, the stuff that, you know, you might get killed, right, okay. by an enemy okay. uh, group? Ouch. The men, look, look, right? Look, the men still look, do those things. Look, look, Even though the woman, right, the matriarch is in charge of all of the local matters, right? The men are in charge of all of the venturing out on dangerous roads and doing dangerous look, diplomacy. Look, 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 go. All right, um, we got to wrap it up pretty soon here. All right. So you know. All right. So I just think I have a super chow and um, okay. Yes, oh, I got some thank yous as well. So I should probably do that. As All right. Well. Should, should should I do my thing first? It's short. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Uh, yeah. So I got a super chat from Richard Bier. Gives us five bucks and says, so just who is responsible for the fetish that so many women have towards emasculating their partners or the fetishized desire for eunuchs? Okay. Well, I mean, I ain't got nothing to say about that. So not my bad. Well, why not? Like, I don't, who is responsible? Like, probably feminism. Is there uh, I think fetishization. Is there a I think that is there a female fetish for eunuchs? Uh, there is guess. both a male and a female fetish for that. Yes, I covered oh. a story where there was a there was a individual that was um, performing castrations on people who wanted to transition and live streaming it for sexual gratification of viewers. Okay, and then they would eat the parts that they oh. removed. Yeah, they got oh. arrested. So, well, but, yeah, all I'm saying is that, that there are sick puppies out there. Okay. Well, with that, I, I would like to do some thank yous. Oh. Thank, I would first like to thank Brian for no longer talking about that. I really appreciate that. Okay, so Kenneth gives us $5. Thank you, Kenneth. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Okay, Michael O. Oh, oh, but in particular, thank you, Kenneth, for responding to the just, you know, could you put, like, let's just move it forward. I really appreciate that. That's That That was quite sweet. And then um, The Great Indoors gives us $100, so thank you, The Great Indoors. Oh. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. That's, That's really, really nice. nice. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Richard Beer gives us 250 Thank you, Richard. You're always good for it. A flash, a wake what the fuck is that? I don't even know. All right, so we're now at 660 for the pregame fundraiser. That gives us about 230 left. So I'll we'll be leaving this up. I'll keep the fundraiser open. Um, we might do like a, a, a another Beat Saber on Sunday. So if you guys enjoy that kind of thing, you know, hang around and take part sometime on Sunday, probably in the early afternoon. Um, but we need about 230. So 230 left. And um, and uh, yeah, so thank you to everybody who supported Richard, Kenneth, Great Indoors, very much appreciated. Um, pretty close to getting this particular sub goal funded, so that's great. And uh, and uh, if you want to join our very generous supporters, feedthebadger.com/support. And uh, let's fight back against the insanity. And I hope some of these larger conservative commentators are listening to this. So they realize that, no, you can really put everything at the feet of feminism, even autogynophilia. I know a lot of people are like, oh, my God, the men, the men, oh, the God. No, no, you can. I mean, what the hell do you think is going to happen when you start telling men that that being heterosexual is a disease? And not just yeah. a disease. It's a criminal disease. Yeah. Like you, you, it's, a, it's a disease as a result of being a criminal. Stop. It's an injury that you inflict on women. It's an injury you inflict on women. You're a diseased criminal for being heterosexual. What do you think is going to happen? Like, what do you think? No, the, like, the average dude is probably going to maybe shake that off. Maybe 
Maybe it'll contribute to some suicidal feelings if he ever loses his female partner. But think about guys who have any kind of abusive background, any kind of stress, like serious mental stresses or like fragility. Like think about that applying to them. Yeah, they'll there's... understand. <laughs> yeah, there's there's one one guy I know who is an autogynephiliac and um he can't perform sexually, he can't even get erect without being fully done up as a woman in lingerie. And uh he told me that it all stemmed from when he was 13 and a 16-year-old girl made him wear her lacy stuff Yeesh. and uh, divested him of his virginity. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. So we're yeah, going so to we're... dark places today. Yeah, we're going to dark places. But here's the thing. like, what, what people do is they see this dysfunction in men and they say, well, that's just men. Really? Yeah, I know. Like, like no. every time they bring up this autogonophilia stuff, like the conservatives do, as if that is something put you put on these guys. Well, they're yeah, just it's just sprung out, out of nowhere. They're yeah, just sprung out of nowhere. I mean, like this woman is saying, oh, 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 the gender shit sprung out of nowhere. Well, men's bad behavior generally doesn't spring out of nowhere either. I don't even necessarily pr- think that this guy's behavior is bad. I mean, I don't think it's harmful to anybody, but I, I like I do think that it's not. A healthy way for him to be within himself right i think that it it's like early childhood trauma or like mid childhood trauma just expressing itself he's like 60 years old now and and he's still stuck in this place where he just i mean i guess Nowadays, it's a lot easier because you can go on like fetish.com or something like that and find just somebody who's step outside got, in, in June. I'm just, who's I'm just got curious. The same, why does, same fetish, but why does this poster have the the thing boner wall on it? I yeah, no, I was asking that um, before we started Is, the last show. I was like, boner wall. What the hell? That sounds apparently okay. So for those of you who are, who are just watching or just listening. She has a poster that says, women will not submit. Get over it. And then on it is like a little star with the term boner wall. Yeah, well, it's, like, know, it's like the website is called boner wall or the organization that made the poster is called boner wall. And I'm like, boner wall. Jesus, I, I was asking like Brian 90s, about that. It sounds like Ligma, you know? Yeah, it's oh no. I haven't ridiculous. looked it up or anything, so I don't know what it is. L- okay, let's lig ligma taint, ligma yeah. nutsack, ligma balls, yeah. <laughs> and ligma right. peen. All right, what? Ligma wall. Let okay, me play some um, more of this. Ligma bone. Yeah. I, I, I got, I got, I got like ten minutes. Okay, all right. Thank you. Tiny bit. I I did the thank yous. Oh, all that's right? it. Oh, okay, okay. What was that, Karen? Tiny bit more. All right, tiny bit more. Let's do it. And wanting to use their individual skills and talents in the workplace and play a full part in decision making and men wanting to cross dress and access women's spaces and sports. They are totally separate issues. No, they're okay. not. I think it's time we looked at what inspired Matt's cathartic rant here. All right. Uh, I'm they're just not. pausing and... for the banana. Do you want to hear more? Uh uh, saying what, saying they're entirely separate issues, like oh, dis- they're in their discrete boxes. Not well, neither the twain shall logic. meet. It, no, it's it's no. They, they're all symptoms. one benefits her and the other doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't understand the connection. Yeah. One is beneficial and the other isn't. There's no logical connection between the two. Well, in yeah, a way, well, they're both beneficial because one gives her a direct benefit. The other one gives her something to point at. A scapegoat for everything yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that justifies the the former. Yeah. So they're both beneficial. Wow, what a kawinky dig that worked out. Yeah. Here is the clip he shows of Helen Joyce in conversation with Michael Shermer. 
you, you know, you know who Matt Walsh is. He's a very conservative Catholic. He's somebody who's anti abortion, anti, you know, he says feminism is the worst thing that's ever happened to Western civilization, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't think he understands, in fact, I'm certain he doesn't understand that that makes him part of the whole problem. Because the problem is that both conservatives like Matt Walsh and gender ideologues that he's mocking fairly, completely fairly, both believe that gender stereotypes and gender roles are inherent to what it is to be a woman. One side uses them to define what a woman is. Matt Walsh thinks that they're inseparable. He understands that a man is a, a male person okay, and a woman is a right. female person, but he thinks. Gender stereotypes. OK, do you want an essential womanhood to defend? Yeah. All right. If, if you want an essential womanhood to defend, then you are saying that there are gender, inherent gender differences. You see, this is the problem. You see these women like a dog chewing a toffee. They want to have an essential uh, womanhood to defend but they don't want men and women to be different because because then you'd have to recognize things that would be inconvenient to them yeah. so they want men to be different from women but they don't want women to be different from men like that's, that's what it comes down to yeah you, this lady wants men to be different from women but does not want women to be different from men and she doesn't understand that that is impossible Oh, well, she right. doesn't want to understand oh. because she can offload the mental load onto men. Yeah. Okay. Do you want oh, to finish and especially this commentary? conservatives. Um, I, I, I think, I think we should probably get going. Brian needs to get going. I need to get he going. Said he, you have ten minutes. So no, no, I said right? that like nine minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah, it's been a while since he said that. Um, this this and... is uh this is the clip that the that by the way that this um Maria McLennan, this clip of Helen Joyce is specifically why she decided to make this video. So this is kind yeah. of like the the crux of the whole thing. Um, okay, well let's But we can do back... another one. I mean, this is yeah, like near let's... the end. We got a lot done today though. I'm very yeah. impressed with you guys. Yeah, we, we did. Like we're, 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 we're trucking along. Let's back let's back it up to the start of this clip. And we'll play so it you out. don't forget we'll it. Play it out. No, play it out next time. All yeah, right. Okay, that's okay, fine. That we'll case, just go here. Yeah. We're doing the because... pregame first first goal of the uh the monthly fundraiser at feedthebadger.com slash support. Support the show by going to feedthebadger.com slash support. It is what it says it is. Unlike this woman uh who, who wants women to be different or men to be different from women, but women not to be different from men. Um and you can also, at any time after the show is over, if you find anything that we have said particularly fascinating, you can go to feedthebadger.com slash just the tip and send us your thoughts. And we will respond to them on the next relevant show. So once again, feedthebadger.com slash support to support the show. Feedthebadger.com slash just the tip to tell us we are not screaming into the void, which is always very much appreciated. Okay, Brian. All right. Sorry. Well, if you guys like this video, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys think about what we discussed on the show today. You can find a link to the full video in the description if you want to watch it in its full context. Um, and please, please, please share this video because sharing is caring. And also, let me know what you guys think about this slight change to our format, our visual format, in the comments as well. I think it is a lot um, smoother and, and less chaotic. So... Thanks, guys, so much for coming on today's episode of The Rant Zucker, and we'll talk to you all in the next video. Men's right activists are machines, dude, okay? They are literal machines. They are talking point machines. They are impossible to fucking deal with, especially if you have, like, especially if you have, like, a, a couple dudes who have good memory on top of that, too. Holy shit, you're fucked.